All right, uh, good evening. My name is Kristen Ike. I am the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for the City of Deltona, and I'm calling the Special Magistrate hearing of February 8th, 2023 to order. The first thing on the agenda is roll call, so I will have all of the Code Enforcement officers introduce themselves. My name is Mark Gibson, Code Compliance Supervisor. Richard Lovett, Code. Renee Kearney, hearing clerk. Myron San Miguel, admin supervisor. Danny Ron, co compliance supervisor. All right, we will go ahead and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is my statement about how the hearings are going to run tonight, and forgive me, I'm going to read this so I don't forget anything. We are here tonight because the city of Deltona has contended that there are violations of the Deltona City Code that exist. This is a public hearing, which means that no general public comment um, will be accepted, but each of the respondents and the code enforcement officers here tonight and any witnesses each of you call will be able to present evidence to me regarding each case and the violations of the Deltona City Code that are being alleged. I am an attorney and appointed by the City Commission to render decisions in these code enforcement cases to determine if a violation of the City Code exists and what fine will be imposed, if any. If you are here for a Massey case, you might see that um, uh, next to your case number on the agenda. That means that I will be determining solely whether you have come into compliance in a timely manner in accordance with the previous order that the special magistrate issued in your case and will not be reopening the case to determine whether or not a violation existed. Any decision I make this evening will be put into a written format in the form of an order. A copy of my written order will be provided to the city and then mailed to you as well. It is important to note that for any order I issue, you may appeal by sending a written notice of appeal to the circuit court within 30 days of the execution of my order pursuant to Florida Statute Section 162.11. The procedure of the hearings today will be governed by Chapter 162, Florida Statutes. Formal rules of evidence shall not apply, but fundamental due process shall be observed and shall govern the proceedings. Hearsay is admissible, but only to support other competent and substantial evidence. If you are a respondent, you will be able to testify. Tell me what you think I need to know about your case present evidence and witnesses. Your testimony will be under oath, so I will be swearing you in, and this hearing is being recorded. For each case, I will call the case number and the city will proceed first. The city has the burden of proving that the code violation exists. Then you will be allowed to respond. I will take the cases in the order that you signed in, uh, first come, first served, and um, I do have a couple of cases that I need to announce that have been withdrawn, correct? I have uh, case number 23-104. Um, do you have the address on that, hearing clerk? I know that one. That one's gonna be 923 Adler Drive. Okay, so that one has been withdrawn. I'm not going to hear that case. And 23-053, that has also been withdrawn. Can you all say the address? That's 1111 Hastings. Okay, thank you. So if you're here for those cases, you don't need to stay. I'm, I'm not going to hear those cases. Um, you should have received when you came in um, a copy of your case file. If you do not get one, please let me know when you come up. 
Um, I will be admitting the case file into evidence unless I receive a specific objection. Um, so I will go ahead and swear in everyone who intends to testify today as a group, which includes the code enforcement officers. So if you are plan to speak to me today, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say I do. Thank you. All right. Do you have first case for me? <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is case 23-056-912 Halstead Street. Versus Amelia Martin. The property address is 912 Halstead Street. The parcel ID number is 8130240020240. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance, Section 110.831. <clears throat> temporary Portable Storage Unit. A temporary portable storage unit is allowed on property solely for the loading, unloading, and temporary storage of goods. The maximum time for the temporary portable storage unit to remain on the property shall be 30 consecutive days with a maximum of two occurrences per year with a maximum of two occurrences per year per lot, not to run consecutively, and may be placed on any paved driveway area, but must be a minimum of five feet from the edge of any right of way and six feet from any side lot line. Correction action for said violation is to remove the portable storage unit from the property. Statutory requirements. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation being sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This is a proactive case that was open on June 21st, 22. A notice of violation was posted on July 25th, 22, and the resident was given until August 3rd to address the violations. No contact was made by the resident since then, and upon several reinspections, the property is still in violation as of today. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $100 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so for this, this picture that I'm currently looking at, it, it doesn't, I can't see the date. Is that from today? This one is from today, correct. Okay. It was at 8, 8.34 a.m. All right, thank you. And you said that this was the, it was issued um, with a time to correct by August 3rd? August 3rd of last year. All right. All right, so obviously there's an issue with the number of storage units since there's only two allowed, correct? And for 30 consecutive for days? For 30 days, that's the main issue, yes. Okay. All right, did the property owner wanna come forward, please? If you wanna speak? Ms. Ike. Oh, 
Yeah, is this mic wireless? Ma'am, Ms. Ike, the property owner requested a uh, translator. Okay. So Officer Jimenez is going to translate. All right, thank you. Okay. We'll just let you do that. That way you ain't gonna. Okay. You got it? Okay. <clears throat> All right, ma'am, if you have anything you would like to tell me, now's the time. Yo lo que quiero decir es que mi casa se me quemó. Ella está quemada. Y entonces, yo estaba en el hospital y una, la señora que me estaba atendiendo, pues yo le dije que había que buscar un storage para poner lo poquito que me quedaba. Y ella me di, y ella buscó esos storage. Yo no sabía. Okay. You hand the mic to, yeah, thank you. She's saying that her house burnt, and because her house uh, burned, um, she had to get those storage units. Um, she was in the hospital for a while, so she had no choice but to put her stuff in those storage units. So that's basically her stuff. Okay. Um, can you ask her uh, what, how long it, she believes it will take for her to um, remove the storage units, uh, and, and also, it seems that there could be other storage solutions, such as using a traditional storage unit, not a pod that's located on the property. Yes. Okay, she's requesting to give her until Saturday. She has someone that's able to help her move the things from the storage units into her burnt house, mm -hmm. um, at least that, so that way she can remove the units. Okay, and the code enforcement officer was requesting 30 days, so I, I'll, I'll provide 30 days. Is there anything else she'd like to say? And, it, and also, can you make sure that you and she are speaking into the microphone? El oficial quiere darte 30 días para poder entonces mover los U-Hauls de ahí. Son 30 días, si es posible que tú puedas hacer eso. Y si hay otra cosa que tú quieres. Yo, eh, yo quisiera eh, sacarlo antes posible porque me están cobrando demasiado de mucho y yo no tengo dinero. Okay, she wants to remove them as soon as possible because um, it is costing her more money and she is, is financially not able to keep them anyways. So she's wanting, she's okay with the 30 days. Okay. And um, the, for the code enforcement officer, what was the recommendation for the fine? $100. $100? Dollars per, per day. All right. She lives off of Social Security and SSI, so she said that she does cannot afford them there. So she is oh, uh, wants to take them out by Saturday. Okay. All right. Um, Excuse me. Can we have her name for the record, please? Oh yes, thank you. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Amalia Martinez. Thank you. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and make my ruling. Um, give me a moment just to look at the case file. All right, I'm going to um, admit the uh, case file as Exhibit A. I find that the notices were properly given. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on 
March 10th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of, and I'm gonna put $75 per day, will be imposed for each day that the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please tell her that she should contact the code inspector as soon as she removes them from her property. Enseguida cuando termines de sacar eso, tienes que comunicarte con el oficial y dejarle saber antes de los 30 días. ¿Cómo? Si yo no sé, una que no sé inglés, la otra que yo no, no tengo carro, no puedo caminar. Yo, yo este señor fue quien me hizo el favor de traerme a Él te va a dar una tarjeta, tú puedes llamar. Ok. Soy supervisor, yo hablo español okay. también, yo hice mi llama y me yeah, gusta nice. todo eso para pasar por la casa a chequear todo. Ok, ¿Eh? okay. Mark. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, the next case is 23-098. 2031 Saxon Boulevard. Go ahead. All right. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dennis Muse. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. Uh, my case number is DEL 23098. Uh, uh, case uh, is City of Deltona versus Schaefer Investments, LLC. The property address is 2031 South uh, Saxon Boulevard. The parcel ID number is 802-301-120-090. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3 adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent, or intent, who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or uh, replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall I'll first make application to the bidding official and obtain the required permit. The uh, corrective action uh, for this violation said you must obtain a mechanical permit for the ventilating of the uh, manicure stations effectively to remove the chemical smell from the business per the International Property Maintenance Code. Um, this is statutory requirements for this notification have been met by the the uh, notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property or hand delivered uh, in this case uh, in that city hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I hear, uh, certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate. Uh, portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. Uh, this case started back on uh, November 16th. Uh, I was called to this location uh, with the fire inspector, Lisa Nadu, and the, uh, at the time, the site property manager, Blanca. Uh, I was informed at the time uh, the vi of the violations, which uh, were plumbing, electrical, and mechanical. The violations, uh, two of the violations, electrical and plumbing, have been corrected. Uh, the only thing that's remaining is the ventilation, uh, the mechanical. Uh, we are dealing uh, with the mechanical violation, uh, the vi uh, ventilation of the unit of the, for chemical smells or odors. Uh, notice of violation was issued on 11-16-22, uh, advising at the time to hire a contractor to handle the permit. They have finally found a AC company and uh, are putting down a payment on uh, a job uh, for the permit, uh, and that was as of yesterday. Now we have the uh, current uh, property manager here tonight, and uh, she can answer any questions she may have. Yes, can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat, you said they applied for a permit today? 
they applied for a permit yesterday. Um, I guess it was uh, done through the uh, computer, okay. Um, and, and that involves the installing? The installing uh, a ventilation system for the odors, uh, for the proper um, okay. removal. And was this a manicure salon? Yes. Uh, but was it was it that prior? Yes. Yes, it was. It was uh, a a nail place that was in there prior. Uh, they had originally obtained uh, permits back in 2012. Um, when the fire department went in there to do their inspection, they found that the uh, there was additional tables added, uh, two additional tables added, and two additional uh, um, chairs. Mm -hmm. um, that, that were added, uh, along with the plumbing and the, any electrical that it went with, with both stations. So, did I, I'm did the addition of the new stations trigger the need to? Yes, it did. Do the, the ventilation? Yes, it did. Um, the um, well, it was originally not found. Uh, apparently, there was an add-on. Um, before the fire department got in there to do their first initial inspection um, with fire and also the building inspector. Uh, and that's when that was noticed. Um, when I first went in there after the third uh, visit from the fire department, uh, this, as soon as I walked in the door, it was so outrageous, this, the odor. Um, and they didn't have any doors or windows open. Okay. Um, and what was the time that you were suggesting to comply? I was going to give them 30 days uh, from this uh, hearing to uh, come into compliance. And recommended fine? Recommended fine, $50 a day thereafter. Okay. Um, give me one moment. ma'am, did you have anything you wanted to tell me? Um, I just wanted to let you know, I'm the property manager, um, I just wanted to let you know that I have the mechanical permit here that was filed. And I think the application. The application, application was filed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and um, for the code enforcement officer, do you anticipate 30 days is sufficient to actually receive the permit? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, ma'am, did you have anything else to add? We did, um, the, the, there has been a contractor hired to do the to perform the work and the money's been uh, half the money's been put down. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, um, I am going to go with the 30 days, so that should give you enough time to complete the uh, the work with hopefully without incurring any fines. Okay. Um, all right. So I do find that the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case file as Exhibit A. And I find that respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on March 10th, 2023. Um, let me write that down. Uh, in the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you stay in contact with the code okay. inspector. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, just have her uh, state her name for me. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. Jamie Eastep. Thank you. And you are the? Property manager. Property manager. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so then this is case number 23-097, also 2031 Saxon Boulevard. 
Okay, again, my name is Dennis Muse. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This is case number DEL 23097, city of Deltona versus Schaefer Investments, LLC. The property address is 2031 Saxon Boulevard. Parcel ID number is 802-301-120-090. Uh, this is a violation of the city of Deltona ordinance, SAP chapter 22, section 22-4, which states, no person shall engage in, manage, transact, or carry on any business, occupation, or profession within the city for which there is a local business tax required for this article or any other provision of this code unless such person shall first procure a local business receipt to, uh, to conduct the same from, uh, from the city. It shall be no defense of non-payment of any local business tax required by this article that the licensee did not receive any bill or notice that the same was due from the city. Corrective action, uh, obtain a business tax receipt uh, license or cease all business operations. Statutory requirements uh, for this notif notification have been met by a notice of hearing and code, a notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with a property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted at the, uh, on the property uh, in that city hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and, sub and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Uh, this case was started on, again, uh, November 16th of 22, um, when I was called to the location uh, by the fire inspector, at least in the do, and the property site uh, manager, Blanca. Uh, I was informed at the time by the fire inspector that there was no uh, uh, business tax receipt uh, obtained uh, and they were working, uh, they had an open business at that time. Uh, the only problem is they, they can't get one until this, the previous violation is corrected. Now, the only trouble is they've been open for 503 days since uh, the 24th of January of 21. Uh, so at this time, we're just asking for a one-time fine of $250. Okay, so it is over 150 days past due the, uh, for, to obtain the business tax receipt? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, ma'am, did you have anything else to add? And again, can you state your name for the record? Jamie Eastep. No, I don't. Okay. All right. Um, and Schaefer Investments is the property management company? We own, yeah, we own the building where the property manager. Okay, so it is for the property manager, not for the tenant. It, that, it would be the tenant's responsibility to get that, um, to get the fine because they're the ones that have been operating that 503 days without. Okay. Um, so I'm, well, I'm concerned though about ordering, putting an order for $250 fine if it's the tenant that is responsible for p getting the BTR. Well, HL Nails is the tenant. Uh, that gentleman, uh, for some reason, didn't want to appear tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be according to the property owner that the tenants take care of any and all violations and fines. Well, but the, um, all of the notices and everything have gone to the, uh, gone to the property management company, not to yes. the tenant. Yes, ma'am. That, and we have to, do, we have to go by what's on the property appraiser as far as send our notices. And they hand, were hand delivered to the tenant also. And he was made aware that there, there may be fines uh, if, if, uh, um, if it came to that. Did you hand deliver to the tenant? Yes, I did. A copy of the notice? Yes, I did. Stay by uh, one, please. Excuse me one sec. Oh, the, the pad. Tennis pays the BTR property. 
uh, okay, my correction, would be that the property owner would be responsible for the fine and what they do with it after that point there, it would be on them. Okay. Uh, the because the property uh, your position is that the property owner is ultimately responsible for the tenants on the property and they will be responsible for the fine yes ma'am okay um, I will go ahead and uh, find that in this case the the notices um, were properly given then, all of them are to the property management company. Um, and I find, and the, uh, excuse me, the case file is entered as exhibit A. I further find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent must correct the violation. Um, in the event respondent, well, in this case, it's a flat fine of $250 um, for the violation. So, but please, please um, get that BTR and contact the code inspector to let you know. And we, we, uh, the tenant will apply for the BTR after the work is completed? Yes, that would be good. Yes. They are going to need a, a, fire, a final fire inspection and a building inspection. Thank you. Okay, and both would, um, 098 and 097, is there, if, um, is the $50 fine, after the 30 days? Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. for the previous, for the yes. previous okay. case, I yes. Make sure. But this case is a flat $250. Okay. And that's paid by Schaefer uh, it, Investments? Well, yes, that's what the, the fine is for, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, the next case is 23-092, 1085 Wilmington Drive. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This is in reference to case number DL23092, uh, City of Deltona versus uh, McCaig Sean. Property address is 1085 Wilmington Drive, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-005-720200. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5. Adopt the latest edition of the Internal, uh, International Property Maintenance Code, Section 304.6, which states that all exterior walls shall be free of holes, breaks, <coughs> excuse me, and loose and rotting materials, and maintained weatherproof and properly service coated, surface coated were required to prevent deterioration. Corrective action is to repair the exterior walls and paint with proper treatment. The exterior wood paneling requires repairs and replacement. Um, they would require to get a permit if it's uh, needed. All statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraisers. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. This was a proactive case uh, that began November 2022. Um, it was in reference to the exterior walls. Wood paneling, um, in this case in particular, was in disrepair. I have spoken to the property owner, Mr. McCaig, in December 2022. Uh, he had requested more time to comply, which I did grant that. Um, but at this time, I did take some pictures today, and the property's still in violation. No permits are on file, no progress are, have been made to make the repairs necessary. 
Uh, the city would, would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 a day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified um, the city. Okay, the um, date on, what, when was the date that you gave him to comply then? Is it, was it January 9th, 2020? No, you gave him additional time, right? I did. The original notice, um, the, the case was established, my initial contact was um, in October. I gave him notice of violation in November. I gave him until January 9th to uh, come into um, compliance. Did you mean January 9th, 2023? 2023. Okay, it says 2022 on here. Um, oh, this must have been because that was when the system changed over. I think there was a discre um, discretion. Okay, so it was January 9th, 2023. 23, yes, ma'am. Okay, and that was the time, the addition, that included the additional time? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, is the property owner present? Come forward. Hi. Hi, for the record, my name is Sean McCagg. I am the property owner at 1085 Wilmington. Okay. Um, the initial indication that I got that there was any type of um, issue with the city of Deltona was that there were um, three, um, I think you can see them in one of the pictures, three citations listed on the front of, of the home. Um, my neighbor at that time is the one that called me and alerted me to that fact. I had not received any type of communication from the city of Deltona prior to that. My initial um, information that came also indicated that date, so it had me a little bit in confusion, like how long has this been going on that I've, I've not known about, you know, a violation. Um, I have been in works since this past summer for refinancing of the home. Uh, the process is quite daunting, obviously. If the income was there to fix this problem and bring these violations up to date immediately, that would have obviously already been done. It is my desire to maintain the property and have a place in the future to retire. I currently do not live in the city of Deltona. I have moved closer to my job, which is on the opposite side of the county in Edgewater. Um, as of most recently, I have been approved for refinancing. However, the process within that, on a limited income, I am a school teacher, I am single, I am responsible for the home by itself in its entirety, just me. Um, the investment that is made into that, I tried taking out 45 of the actual um, house value against the equity. The equity is sizable in that home. Um, in fact, the bank suggests that the equity in the home, uh, looking at the appearance, you could not tell, but the equity apparently is around $225,000 at this point. I'm trying to borrow $45,000 against that. I do have one that has been approved as a refinancing. It is, however, still on the table because the outrageous amount of closing costs that were requested from that particular lender. Um, I do also have a, <coughs> excuse me, my voice, it's school all day. Um, I do also have a um, request in at my uh, credit union uh, so that I can take out, instead of refinancing it because of the conditions of current finance rates at this immediate time, um, if I could take out a home equity loan there, and that's being pursued by the credit union at this time. Um, I do request additional time to bring the code up to, or bring all of the code violations up to date, but this is not something that I've been aware of for an extensive period of time, so. And what do you think would be a reasonable time to come into Based compliance? On, I've already had estimates done, like on the roof, on the sidewalk, um, but based on what they're telling me, the timeline for when they can get out there, the earliest that I could have even gotten a, and I believe this was mentioned in my message to um, the code enforcement um, officer, um, 
the earliest that they told me my estimate, the good estimate that I got, was February. So even if I was under construction right now, the extension of time from January 9th to February 8th is, was just simply not enough time to get these things turned around. Yes, so to clarify, I believe the code inspector is asking me to give you an additional 30 days. So my question I, to you is I, what you think a reasonable time would be for me to give Right, right from now today. in the current state of affairs and the amount, I would say probably early June is when this will be back up to full snuff. The objective is not to simply do what appears to be necessary, but the inside of the home mm -hmm. has already, the carpet has already been removed, all of that is done. So the process that I'm going, trying to go through is a reno of the home to bring it up to, so that the appearance looks like the market value. Okay. Working on my own personal salary right now, that's kind of yeah. a crazy So let me, let, let me clarify. So the, the violation is for the exterior walls. That's all we're here to discuss. So um, June is, I think, is just too much time. I don't think that's reasonable. But um, would the city be willing to um, give 60 days? Yes. The city okay. Agreed. I, I'm, I would be willing to do 60 days, um, but the exterior walls is what we're here to discuss, and that needs to be focused on before, let's say, the interior of the okay. home. That's one of the three. Oh, okay. There's other ones so that we're going to do. That's why I was saying if, you know. Okay. Well, I'm willing to do 60 days on, on this one. I don't think, I think June is a little... It's a little excessive, um, but um, I do see, let's see, I am looking at the code and the file here. I find that the um, notices were properly given in this case, and I'm going to um, admit the case file as Exhibit A. Uh, I find the respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that the respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on April 9th, 2023. Um, and in the event, um, oh, I'm sorry, can I ask again, what was your recommendation on the fine? Uh, $25 a day. 25, thank you. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you stay in contact with her. All right, so the next case. Also the Zada. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one is 23-093, also 1085 Wilmington Drive. Go ahead. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This is in case reference DL23093, City of Deltona versus McCaig Sean. Property address is 1085 Wilmington Drive, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-005-720-200. This is in violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, which adopting the latest addition to the D International Property, Property Maintenance Code, Section 302.3, .3, Sidewalks and Driveways, which states that ICE, all sidewalks, walkways, stairs, driveways, parking spaces, and some areas shall be kept in proper state of repair and maintained free of hazardous conditions. Corrective action is to repair or replace the damaged driveway and obtain permits if required. Statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violations were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to Special Magistrate Clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. Again, um, proactive case. Uh, this is in regards to the driveway that's in disrepair. Um, Mr. McKay left me a message in December um, requesting more time. I did give them more time that was requested. Um, no communication since, and uh, the city is requesting 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of 25 days. 
um, until such time of the property owner has notified the city. The recommendation was $25 again? $25 a day, yes. And the amount of time? 30, but we can go with the 60 and keep it the same if we want. Okay. <clears throat> All right, sir, did you have anything to tell me for this case? No, um, there does seem to be a miscommunication at some point. I was never notified that I was given more time other than a conversation that I had with someone in code enforcement other than um, my agent who said, I'm quite sure we can give you more time. So I was not, like, where that time was supposed to go, I wasn't sure. Yeah. And I had a very friendly conversation with that agent at the time letting them know that we were still in the process of ascertaining funds to fix the property. Right, and I'm, you know, we're not here to begin fines or anything at this point. Again, I'm, we're trying to gain compliance. So again, I'll ask you, um, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna accept June, but is there a date that, you know, you believe would be reasonable? <laughs> okay. so I'm, I'm just telling you, I know what it's gonna take to get when, once that money does come in, then I have to get the contractor to get out there and, and start the process. So okay. I'm not gifted at these things. Obviously, I would have done the work myself if I was, but it's... Is there one more case on this property? Yes, ma'am. The last one. Okay, and that's roof and drainage? Yes. Hey, Mayor. Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor, Richard Lovett. Um, Marion, would you have a problem giving them 90 days? Because I think that getting that driveway and that concrete work might take a little bit longer. I do not have a problem with that. <coughs> Whatever will make I, it easier for him to get into compliance. I actually was going to suggest the same because I do think, I mean, that's, and it's more expensive work. And I we have three to, issues going on, so. Yeah. Okay. I promise it will look better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in this case, I find that the um, notices were properly given. I'm admitting the case file as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged in that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on May 9th, 2023. That's 90 days. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. Respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with the order. So please stay in contact with her. All right, and then we have 23-094, 1085 Wilmington. <clears throat> My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed with the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This is, is in reference to case number DEL 23094, City of Deltona versus McCaig Sean. Property address is 1085 Wilmington Drive, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-005-720-200. This is in violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, which, which adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 304.7, which states that all the roofing, flashing, shall be sound, tight, and not have any defects to admit rain. Uh, the corrective action is to repair or replace the roof, gutters, and drainage, and obtain permits where necessary. The statutory requirements for notification have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the, at the address listed with property appraisers. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. Um, same, same situation, uh, case began November 2022 or October in regards to the roof in disrepair. Um, we'll go ahead and continue with the uh, 90 days and $25 a day until um, the property is in compliance and the owner contacts the city. Thank you. 
The um, violation that you've cited is for roof and drainage, correct? Roof and flashing. Okay. It says the roof and flashing shall be sound, tight, and not have defects that admit rain. Correct. What um, evidence do you have that this is admitting rain? There's photos from today that are probably easier to see. You've got holes in the roof. Um, the, the roof is, is peeling up there in the corner, and then it's also leaning down. The so I guess, I'm not sure, I, excuse me, I'm not sure exactly how you call that, but I think it's the soffit that's coming down. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, all right, sir, did you have anything to provide on this case? No, I think that will, with the roof replacement, that will all obviously be covered at least it is in my quote so far. Okay. All right, thank you. I am gonna stick within the 90 days for this one as well. This one might be a more expensive repair. All right, I find that the um, notices were properly given in this case. The ex uh, case files admitted as, as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on May 9th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next case is 23-128-1216 Clarion Circle. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This is in reference to case number DEL 23128, City of Deltona versus Safar Siba. Uh, property address is 1216 Clarion Circle, um, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-038-090-080. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 66-57, which states that no person in charge or control of any property in the city, whether public or private property, whether as an owner, tenant, occupant, or otherwise, shall allow any wrecked, discarded, junked, abandoned, inoperable, discarded, and or partially dismantled vehicles or parts of vehicles to remain in such property longer than five days unless such vehicle is located in a fully enclosed or capable of fully enclosed building such as a garage or a shed. For purposes of section, a carport does not constitute as enclosed building. The corrective action is to remove, repair, or have current tags on the vehicle or put inside the fully enclosed uh, structure. Statutory uh, requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing, notice code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address list of the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true, accurate portrayals of, of, uh, of what I observed the day they were taken. I did receive a complaint January 23rd in regards to a, uh, possibly a car dealership from this residence. This complaint also indicated multiple inoperable vehicles on the property. I met with a gentleman, um, Dan. He advised that he brings vehicles from his dealership in Orlando to repair and sell. I advised him of the city ordinance of the inoperable vehicles that are without tags and would need to have valid tags that are that is registered to the address or parked in an enclosed structure. I gave him a door hanger in, in indicating the multiple violations and corrective action. 
Uh, he requested all violations in the document form with the violation and corrective action and a compliance date. So I did return later uh, that day and posted the vehicle abatement notice. Um, and he, that day uh, we received a phone call requesting the hearing to appeal. I would, this violation still uh, remains as of today. Uh, there are pictures in, from today. There are a few um, inoperable vehicles that remain on the property. Can I speak or? Yes, but give me a moment to look at the photos. Okay. Is it, okay, Do, or is, it, is it just two that I'm looking at? Two photos? As of this morning, there should, yes, there was two inoperable vehicles on the property. That's false, they were not inoperable. I've never had any inoperable cars at my house at all. She's lying through it to you. Okay, well, let's be respectful. Um, I'm just being honest. <laughs> well, I don't, so, um, can you, for the code enforcement officer, um, explain how these are inoperable that are remaining? Um, so they're considered abandoned vehicles and in our um, definition for abandoned vehicles, it's without current state license tag that is required. And that is part of being an inoperable vehicle. Okay. The Mercedes has a tag. So. She doesn't know that the other one doesn't. I might not have had it up. Hold on one moment. I will give you a chance to talk. Okay. Um, so yes. So I'm. I did want to ask the same question. So I do see a tag on one of them, but not on the other. Correct. When I ran the tag, it came back no record found. So I wasn't able to identify or verify the tag was a valid tag. I see. Okay. And um, you don't happen to have the code section that talks about the uh, definition. I have the definition. Yeah, can you tell me what it is? Yes, I have it here if you want it, but it's um, section oh, yeah. 6654. Can you bring it forward for me? Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, sir, if you'd like to speak, now's your chance. Please put, um, state your name and address for the record. Yeah, I'm Daniel Ibrahim, also known as Dan. That's what I told her, um, my mom's house. Uh, the cars had dealer tags on them. I don't know what's wrong with, with that. They're registered to my dealership, but my mailing address is my home. So here on the registration is my mailing address, which is that address, so. I don't know why her computer didn't find any tag, but you guys could look, these are real tags. I'm not using fake tags, so. I, I don't see a tag on this vehicle. It fell off, it was, it was in the truck. I had to put it back on the truck. Uh, I was busy, sorry. She came at a wrong time. I told her to come back at three. All the cars were gone. There's no cars left at the house at all. Um, but yeah, that all right. was mine. Well, um, and what was the time for compliance that you were requesting? Well, uh, we posted an abatement notice and they, it gives them 10 days to come into compliance or the um, city comes in and abates the violation. Okay. And it would have been tomorrow, it would have been the 10th day. Okay, so what are you asking me to order? I guess just if he comes in, if he comes into compliance and we can bring him back as a repeat, um, he requested the hearing today at this time, I guess, to appeal the abatement notice. Yeah, I should be able to park oh. at least three, three cars, which matches the amount of tags I have. That matches the registration listed to the house, I mean. Well, I'm confused with the, sorry, because I am, the, correct me if I'm wrong, but the city commission hears abatement appeals, correct? Yes. So I'm not sure what you're asking me to order. Well, like I said, if, if he comes into compliance as of tomorrow, then we'll, on the 10th day, then we'll close out the case um, mm -hmm. as he was advised. Um, 
Uh, if not, and we notice that there's still violations on the property, then the city will go in and abate the violations. Um, okay. As far as an order is concerned, I mean, if he comes into if he remains in violation or brings back any inoperable vehicles, um, we can we can maybe request a fine of twenty five dollars a day. Isn't there more important stuff I, we could be focusing on? Like he yeah, has. I mean, there's multiple cases stuff. that go along with this. Okay. Waiting. Like. Did you want to add any ice um, for the code manager? No, he requested this hearing based off the uh, abatement order that we posted on the property. Okay. So that's why it was brought before you. But I'm not the correct person to hear abatement. Um, it, well, it was just the, you have the right to decide on whether the abatement is, can proceed or, or not, as per the way that it's written. So that it's supposed to any kind that, that they want to contest this kind of abatement that they can come before you for that. But again, my reading of the code was that for abatement proceedings, isn't it the city commission that decides those if they are appealed? If you agree that they're in violation, then we move forward with an abatement. If there's an appeal, the city commission hears whether or not, hears that appeal to determine whether or not a nuisance exists, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I, again, I'm not sure what, how I would order something that the city commission in the city code has the authority to determine. So we were supposed to be in front of the city commission, not you? On yeah. the abatement notice, it says special magistrate. All right, let's take um, five minutes. I wanna look at the code and we'll uh, come back in five minutes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>
this uh, case was brought under 66-63 of the City of Deltona Code. It does provide that if a hearing is requested under this section related to abandoned vehicles, the hearing shall be held at the next regularly scheduled special magistrate meeting following receipt of the written request for hearing and the owner of the abated property shall be provided written notice of the date, time, and place of the hearing after submitting a request for a hearing. If the special magistrate finds that a violation exists, the special magistrate has the authority to grant the owner of the abated property or the subject real property where the violation occurred additional time for corrective action. So at this point, um, you are asking me to find that a violation exists and that the, and to rule on the amount of time for the abatement. Okay. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. And you are not seeking a daily fine? Not at this point, no. Not okay. for this case. Okay. Sir, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, I want to be able to keep three of my cars from my dealership at my house because I have dealer tags. I should be able to do that. They should not harass me about that. It's ridiculous. I'm bringing taxes to the to society. Like, why, why harass me about that? Well, the uh, I have 133 pictures of people committing the same violation within less than a five-minute drivable radius from my house. Pictures and videos. 133 of them. Would you like them? No, I okay. don't. Um, that's not relevant in this case. Um, oh, no? Uh, so, at least in it, from my perspective. So, the question I have is um, for the code inspector, if there are license plates, you're saying that you ran what you could see, correct? Correct. And that they were not valid tags. It just it came up, no record found. Okay. Which is a fault in her system. They are valid. They have 23 on them, so. Well, I, I'm going to provide, um, so tomorrow would be the date for abatement, uh, to, to complete the abatement, correct? That's correct. Um, is it possible that the records, the state records just haven't caught up or something like that? Should we give a few, a few additional days? Well, typically what we do is the day of the abatement, we'll have a deputy come on scene and run the tags for us. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm, I Having a I'm dealer tag is not, um, is on residential property is actually another code violation. The, the vehicles have to be registered to the um, resident, property owner, or tenant living in that, in that, in that household. The Can't registration have a, has the address listed. Has the home address? Yes. All right. Um, can I see you? I see you I brought two. them. Uh, I have three total, but two with me. One I left at home, but I have both of them. I could do. All right. Can yeah, I see those, absolutely. please? Yep. Thanks. Thank you. There's one that's missing, so I have three total. Of these do have the address listed, so okay. can you help me understand how there's still a violation if the registration cards turned in show that they're registered and they have they're registered at this address? And that's great, just as long as when we go out tomorrow, uh, the tags are on the vehicle and they show that they're um, operable, so that when we go out tomorrow um, and we run the tags again and we see that the vehicles are not in violation, then we close out the case. But the tags have to, you know, it has to be displayed on the vehicle, otherwise it's considered an inoperable vehicle, Just as per our ordinance. took that picture. Okay. Um, so if he's not in violation, then great. Right, so the issue at this point is they're not displayed. Correct, as, as you can see, I think Properly. that was this morning. At least for one of them, at least Correct. for this 
Okay. And I was, like I said, I wasn't people. able to, you know, I ran the tag and I wasn't able to um, indicate whether it was registered or not. So when we, if that truck is out there with no tag, we go and run the plate again with the deputy I and they find that. that it's registered to the home and the, and the resident, then the, the property is in compliance. Okay. I was with her today when she took these pictures. She had no time asked me for the tags for the, the other vehicle. Okay, I think well, she should have. I mean, again, what she's at saying to you is that they need to be displayed on the vehicle. Okay, at that moment they weren't because they fell off, like I said. Okay. I apologize about that. All right, well, again, the time for compliance is tomorrow, correct? Correct, 10 days. Okay, so um, I'm going to find that a violation exists um, of this section of the code 66-63. Again, because they're not displayed, but if you if you display them okay. appropriately, um, then the violation would be even would even be as cured. dealer tags, correct? Because What's that? Even though they are dealer tags, they, the registration address listed is my address. So yeah, I understand that, and I'm admitting this into evidence. So okay. the but the tag the the license plate and tags need to be displayed, correct? Yes. Thank you. All right. So, um, as I said, I'm ordering that the violation of section 66-63 does exist, um, and the time to comply for the abatement is tomorrow, and you will need to display the license plate and tags. Okay. Thank you. But otherwise, I think once you do that, there shouldn't be an issue. I see, and I'm admitting into the record, um, sorry, for the, for the, Recording, I mean, I find that the uh, affidavit um, of service and the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case files exhibit A, and I'm admitting um, the dealer registrations, two of them, as exhibits B and C. But um, can we have these copied quickly before? Yeah, thank you. I'll go and do it. I'll go do it. Okay, we'll have two copies made for the record, and they'll hand it right back to you. I can uh, I can make bring the third one in tomorrow too, so you guys could have a copy of that. Yeah. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, man. Thank you. Sorry. All right. So this is 23 131, same address, 1216 Clarion Circle. Did we skip 129? Uh, that's just what I was handed. Do you have 129? Yeah, no, it's 128 through 132. 131. We just did. There should be 129, 130, 131. And we just did 128. 128, yes. Okay. I don't need to do them in a particular order um, unless you, the code enforcement not. officer, wants to take them in a particular order. No. All right, we'll I'm do good. 131 and. Oh, okay. Thank you. All 
All right. Should this we do 129 or? 129, okay. All right. All right, so this is, uh, yes, 23 129, same address, 1216 Clarion Circle. Okay. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona's Code Compliance Officer. This is in case reference number DEL 23129, City of Deltona versus Safar Siba. This property address is 1216 Clarion Circle, Deltona. Parcel ID number is 813-038-090-080. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 66-18E, which states no vehicles may be parked or stored in, in the front yard forward of the edge of the principal dwelling except on approved driveway or driveway extension. Corrective action for said violations of all vehicles parked in the front portion of the property must be on an approved driveway or a driveway extension. Vehicles may also be parked on the side of the house, behind the front face or in the rear yard. All vehicles must, be, must have a current tag and be operable or they, or they must be stored in an enclosed garage. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. Um, same circumstances, received a complaint. Uh, when I was out there, I noticed multiple vehicles on the property, parked in the front yard, all along the driveway. Um, posted the notice of violation uh, as, as request by a gentleman um, by the name of Dan. As of today, um, there is one, park, one car parked on the side of the driveway. Uh, it looks to me that there is um, kind of a driveway extension there made of rocks. So uh, the property is in compliance as of today, but I would like to have this case on record to bring back as a repeat if necessary. Okay, I see that you gave the date of yesterday, right? To February 7th to come in compliance? Yes. And as of today, they did, they were in compliance? They were in compliance today, yes. And I'm okay with putting them in compliance. All right, so they didn't, if they came into compliance by the date you ordered, I can't find that they were not in compliance. Correct? Well, they, com they came into compliance by the date you ordered. Cor correct. So, I, I mean, is there a reason that I shouldn't dismiss this case? I'm just asking for, um, to keep it on record so that in case it happens again, we can bring it back as a repeat. I'm not asking for any kind of fines. But they came into compliance within correct. the date that you ordered. So I don't see how I can do that. Okay, then we can dismiss the case. Okay, did you have something to add? Yeah, we just need to withdraw this one. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're gonna, that one is withdrawn. Okay. All right, this is 23-130. Okay. Same address, 1216 Clarion Circle. Yes. Okay. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona Code Compliance Officer. This is in case reference number DEL 23-130. City of Deltona versus Safar Siba. Property address is 1216 Clarion Circle, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-038-090-080. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Violation J, except as uh, provided below, no vehicle repairs or maintenance shall be done at a location not zoned and properly licensed for vehicle repair activities. Vehicles may be repaired incidental to primary use of residential premises, so long as the vehicle being prepared, repaired is owned and occupied owned by an occupant of the premises and registration of the vehicle must reflect the address at which the repairs or maintenance are being done. Such repairs and maintenance must be completed in less than eight hours and may occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, it was the corrective action is to cease all vehicle repairs. Statutory requirements for this notification of this hearing have been met. 
Notice of hearing and notice of code, code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraisers. Records, in addition, both notices were posted to the property at city and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Um, um, the resident here, Dan, did express to me that he, again, brings vehicles home from his dealership for repairs and to sell. Um, I did not say sell. I was only able to get a picture um, I believe it was January 30th with somebody working on a vehicle. Uh, the only evidence that I have is him admitting that the vehicles, vehicles um, are repaired on the property. I never never said that. She has no proof of that. And uh, that she has no proof that that vehicle that he's working on wasn't registered to me. So I'd like to see it if she does. Do you have a response? As, like I said, the only evidence I have is him advising me the day that I was out there that he was work he works on vehicles because he brings them from his Orlando dealership. I did not say that on that day. I said that on a prior day, and I did not say I sell them at my property ever. She's lying. Okay. That's the only response I have right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to find no violation in this case. Okay. Thank you. Um, Based on just that statement alone, without further evidence, I'm going to sure. dismiss that case. I suppose I should, for the record, at least say that the uh, I find that the notices were properly given, and I'm admitting the case file as Exhibit A. All right, and then there's, all right, so let's do 23-131-1216 Clarion Circle. Okay, can you just give me one moment, please? What's that? Can you just give me one moment, please? Sure. Excuse me. Uh, can I ask for proof on 128? Uh, why that? that I've already ruled on that case. Okay. I, I don't remember seeing any evidence that it wasn't fixed by yesterday, which was the, the date. I've, I've already ruled on that case. Okay. DEL 23-131, we're going to withdraw. Awesome. Okay, you're dismissing this case? Yes. Or withdrawing. Yes, withdrawing. But we can continue with 132. Okay. What's that? Yes, 132. I got it. Go ahead. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This case is in reference to DEL 23132, uh, City of Deltona versus Safar Siba. Property address is 1216 Clarion Circle, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813 038 090 080. 
This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Chapter 22, Section 22-4, which states no person shall engage, manage, transaction, transact, or carry on a business, occupation, or profession within the city for which there is local business tax required by this article or any other provisions of this code unless such person shall first procure or a local business tax receipt to conduct the same from the city. It shall be no defense of non-payment of any local business tax required by this article that the licensee did not receive any bill or notice that the same was due from the city. Corrective um, action for the violation is to obtain a business tax license slash receipt or cease all business operations. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Um, again, this, this case was received as a complaint January 23rd in regards to possibly a car dealership with the resident. Um, the complaint also indicated multiple inoperable vehicles on the property in which we um, addressed. Um, again, I met the same situation, met with Dan uh, and advised him. He advised me that he brings uh, vehicles from his dealership in Orlando to repair and sell. I advised him the city ordinances of running a business from the residence and that all vehicles without tags would need to have a valid tag that is registered to the address or parked in an enclosed structure. A home office is permitted at the residence following our city ordinances, uh, but a uh, business tax receipt would be required. I did give him a uh, door hanger that day on January 23rd, or uh, January, indicating the, the multiple violations and corrective action, and he requested all the violations in a document form with the violation and corrective action and compliance date. I did return later that day and post the notice of violation, um, and following that day, he requested this hearing to appeal. Um, as of today, I did email our business tax office confirming if a business tax receipt has been obtained and uh, there hasn't been any business tax receipt for a home office. There has not been a business tax receipt? Correct. Obtained? Issued. Okay. And when was it due? Uh, the notice of violation was due, I believe it was yesterday, the 7th. I see February 2nd. February 2nd. Okay. So with respect to the business tax receipts, um, I only have authority to issue a- One-time fine, yes. One-time fine, but that's if it's over 150 days past due. Correct. Otherwise, the penalty under the state statute is 25% penalty, basically, you know, when they apply. So um, it hasn't been 150 days? No. So- well, I don't know, to be honest with you. I was just out there. Um, we just, uh, you know, had the initial case. Um, I did give him time to comply, and then the, he did request a hearing, so um, didn't even get a chance to really go through the process. <laughs> okay. Did you have something to Yeah, I'd like to see evidence that I engaged in any kind of business activity. Her testimony that I said I was selling cars is false. Like, that, that can't. I never said that, and she has no proof of that. I never engaged in any business activity at my house at all, and there's no proof. I'd love to see it. Well, he does have the dealer, uh, car dealer, regist or I car was, registration. I was using it as a personal vehicle. I'm allowed to do that. And it's um, registered dealer Dan's Auto LLC to that address. Yeah. Um, I mean, at this point, there's not really, you know, I, I can't really impose a fine, so I'm going to dismiss it at that this point it doesn't mean that you can't bring this case later down the Correct. road um but um so I, I don't need to get to the merits of whether or not there's a business at this point um but if if you bring it back to me at a later date then i would okay all right so i'm going to dismiss 132. So that just leaves one that's stuck, correct? The number one. Right, the one, first one, How do 128. I appeal? What's that? Can I appeal that? Um, I want to appeal that decision. Can the, What's the process? Can the uh, code manager um, speak to that? Or actually, you may want to, if you'd like, you can speak to him off 
off the record about that, but. Yeah, I can speak to them outside on it, that's fine. What's that? I can speak to them outside on it. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. As long as it's on record that I am able to appeal that, right? Yes, there is an appeal process, okay, correct? That's all I need. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, this is case 23-054, 2865 Faison Circle. Good evening. My name is Tyler Russo. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DEL 23-054, the City of Deltona versus Estrella Jose Antonio Olvera and Delgado Jajara. I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. The property address is 2865 Face and Circle. The parcel ID number is 813-043-400060. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, unauthorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building, of a structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. The corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit for the wooden structure in the backyard. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona, 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact our office with the permit number when obtained. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of co-violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On October 28th, 2022, this case was created due to a complaint from a resident. Upon arrival at the residence, I noticed a tall wooden structure in the backyard that I could see from the street view. I attempted making contact at the front door with the homeowner, but no one had answered. I left the door hanger stating to obtain a permit for the wooden structure. After a week, I came back to establish contact again and it was never made. I posted the notice of violation onto the property to obtain a permit. The homeowner got in contact with someone from inside of the city hall over the phone and informed us that they had been in contact with an engineer to get drawings done for this permit. A few days later, I myself got in contact with the homeowner over the phone, and since this notice of violation has been posted, the homeowner stated that they had been in the process of obtaining the permit, but have not obtained it as of today. As of today, this permit has not been applied for and the structure still exists on the property. The city would like to request 45 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. And what is the structure? I'm not exactly sure what the structure is, but it's just a, a looks like a two-story wooden tall structure. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, can you state your name and address for the record? Yes, good evening, my name is Jahaira Delgado and I'm the current property owner. Okay. I did came down to, as soon as I came home, because I was in vacation, to find the letter that um, Officer Russo had mailed to us, and I did get in contact with him. I did express that, unfortunately, whether I want it to be in a faster pace than, you know, what it is, well, the hurricane problems, all the engineers in the area were extremely busy, and their dates were off to, like, April and March, so I was able to contact this specific engineer out of um, New Smyrna Beach, and he said that he could come to my house sometime in December and January. Because of that, when I came to um, the building right next door to the building administration, mm -hmm. they told me that I, because of the shed that I'm building, they told me that it, was, it could be up to 15 feet high by a certain width and um, dimension. 
um, because I exceeded by one foot, I need engineer plans for me to be able to apply for a permit. So in the process of hiring the um, engineer, they actually just came out um, in January to take measurements, um, specifications, and now I'm in the waiting list. So whether I wanted to go quickly than I want, I, you know, my structure will get damaged with, you know, sun, water, and all of that. So I, I just want to resolve the issue. I never thought it was going to be, you know, more than what it is. Never been in court for anything. So I'm here with a receipt with the information of the engineer. When I contact them, they're, um, I talked to them this past week. They're more than uh, welcome to give you any information. I did make contact with them back in October. Um, we went into contract on the 20th of January when the um, draftman came out to my home. So other than that, I'm just waiting for, for them to complete what they need to do so I can come and get my permit. So what is it that you're building? It's a shed. Okay. And it's that high because I have my uh, ride-in lawnmowers, so I'm wanting to store that at the bottom and then your usual boxes on the top. Okay. You know, like Christmas stuff and things like that. Right. So when I came down the first time by the city code, you can go as high as 15 feet. Am I correct? That's what I got told when I came down to the uh, other building on the side. And it has to be within 120 square foot, the length and, am I correct? Correct, anything under 120 square feet, you don't need any engineer drawings. Correct, so just because I exceeded by the fascia of the um, roof, then unfortunately I do need them and that's what's holding me back. Okay, um, and so in your view, what would be a reasonable time to obtain the permit um, since you're waiting for the engineer? You're, you need the engineered plans to obtain the permit. Unfortunately, yes. Um, I talked to him today and he made it seem like I'm very close, but he did not give me a specific date. Mm -hmm. I did tell him I was coming uh, before the court, so if he can tell me anything that could help. Um, the day that I spoke to someone on the phone, I guess a manager, they told me not 45, but 90 days. Um, I don't mind the 45 days, to be honest, because if, I don't, if they don't come around with me, at this point, it's not my fault. So I can just check in back at whatever time before the 45 days and say, hey, I spoke to the engineers, I'm still on the waiting list, what can I do after that? But at this precise moment, I can't. Yeah, work. well, I don't want, I mean, we have to, I have to set a reasonable time to come into compliance and I don't, I want that to be a reasonable time. Um, would the city be willing to do 60 days? 60 days is good. Yeah, I want to give you a little extra time, but I mean, it is a violation that applies to you and your property. So, you know, you have to put a fire under that engineer um, to, to get him to uh, get those plans to you um, because after 60 days, that's when um, a fine uh, would begin to run. Um. I decided to come here because maybe by me having that paper would actually help me to try to um, hurry up the process. Might mm -hmm. be telling them, hey, they gave me only a certain amount of days, so maybe I can, you know, secure my structure too because material is expensive. So it's getting, sure. it's getting damaged with rain, so I need it also. Okay, and did you want me to look at the paper that you brought? Sure, I printed it out so you guys can keep it. Okay. Could can you bring that up to me? Your Honor, I, I, I honestly think 90 days would be better. You're probably looking at about 10 weeks to get the engineer drawings. All right. So I think 90 days would be more suitable for. If the city's willing to do 90 days, that's fine with me. 90 days is good. All right. All right, so this is an invoice from the structural engineer. And it shows the date um, when they came out with the draftsman. I approved um, the amount of the engineer plans, and then basically the whole process started. That right. Day. So it appears you paid the initial payment, and then you pay ad again when you receive the drawings for the second half. Correct. Because right. I, I I work in construction myself. Um, I am. I just moved to Deltona three months ago. So per code, I know it's basically generic, but certain you know, uh, CDs have different, so I told them that I want to make sure that everything on the print is per code 
for your city. So that's why he said, just let's do the deposit, and then after I approve the set of plans, then I can move forward. But okay. it's a matter of just, he's gonna draw it, and then I approve it, and if it's per code, then we should be good to go. Okay, so I think you said this is a copy that we can yeah, you keep, can keep, correct? Yes. You can keep it. Yes, it's in my email. All right, and this is, um, you were recommending a nine, uh, $25 a day? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, I find the notices in this case were properly provided and I am admitting the case file as Exhibit A and I'm admitting um, the engineer's invoice as Exhibit B for the record. Mm -hmm. um, and I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on May 9th, which is 90 days, uh, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please keep in contact with him and let him know when you come into compliance. Okay, I have a quick question. Yes. After I receive my, my plans and I can come apply for the permit, then the permitting process starts, that would hold everything, correct? Like if there's another process after the application of the permit has been submitted. Yeah, so I, if, if you don't mind, I can speak with her. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't wanna hold anybody. Back. Yeah, but the to be clear, the, the order is that you are to obtain the building permit within 90 days. So that means you have to actually receive the permit, not just apply. Correct, after I receive it, then there's another process, right? After yes. I receive a permit, so that won't go into the violation time. Now, it once you're saying the permit, the, it's, it's in compliance. Uh, yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. That was it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is uh, case 23-101-2785 West Covington Drive. Steve Brockhoff, employee of the City of Deltona as an enforcement officer. This will be case number DEL 23-101, City of Deltona versus Michael Anthony Batar. Uh, property located is uh, 2785 West Covington, Deltona. Pro parcel ID number is 813-032-830-040. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, uh, adopting the latest uh, addition of the property maintenance, uh, International Property Maintenance Code uh, 304. Point two, which states that all exterior surfaces, uh, including but not limited to doors, door uh, and window frames, cornices, porches, trims, balconies, decks, fences, shall be kept in sound working condition, maintained in good repair. Exterior wood surfaces and other decay resistant uh, woods shall be protected from the elements uh, and decayed by painting uh, or other protective covering uh, treatment. This is uh, in regards to uh, fire damage on, on this particular property. The uh, corrective action would be to repair the, well, the walls, uh, replace uh, the walls uh, and uh, or re remove the entire st uh, structure. Uh, the case began as a result of a fire that occurred in May of uh, uh, 2022. Uh, the current owner uh, purchased the, the burnt property in July with intent of rebuilding it. Uh, you know, cleaning up work had begun. They did um, uh, have a dumpster on uh, site and they did, they did a lot of cleanup, but then work ceased. Um, I monitored for resumption of work uh, before litigation. On September 21st, uh, 2022, I, I posted a notice of violation in hopes it would spur uh, contact or work uh, received no contact from the owner. Uh, the property is still in violation after the compliance date of October 25th, 2022. I was poised to bring this um, last year, but uh, because of the hurricanes, uh, it, it delayed the, the process. Uh, I was out at the property uh, this morning and took a picture and, and there's been no change in this particular uh, case. Okay. 
Uh, yes, I see this is a picture dated from today. And so is that a, where the garage would be? Uh, yeah, the, the, I guess there was an RV that started fire and it started the structure on fire. Uh, the garage uh, uh, walls are missing. They would have to be replaced. Okay. Uh, it's not the best picture behind there. There was uh, another structure attached to the house uh, that's also burnt. Um, I, I'm, for the fire damage, I'm just bringing this one uh, case as in order to come into compliance with this. Uh, they'll have to get a permit, which means they'll have to get an engineer, which means they'll have to actually repair it properly. Okay, and so what was the time that you were recommending for compliance? Um, to obtain the permit is, uh, would, uh, so where work would be in, in uh, progress, uh, the city would, uh, is 60 days, because 60 it's days. Uh, probably gonna take an engineer. Okay. Um, At, after which we'd like a fine of $150 per day. Okay, um, give me a moment. All right. All right, um, do you wanna provide any information? Sure, yeah. Okay, can this you? This is my son's uh, house. Okay. We bought it to fix it. Can you state and your name and address for the record? Amir Bittar. Okay. And, um, and you, I'm sorry, what is your ad address? Are you so speaking I'm the, I'm for? The, I'm the property owner. I'm Michael Batar at 2785 West Covington. This is my father who's speaking on behalf of me because he's more informed on the matter. Okay. And the address is this address or the, I mean, the current address, 2785 okay. um, West Covington Delta. Okay. Um, first 60 days is not enough, I mean, whatever you say, and if I want to pull a permit, it takes 30 business days for the permit to be, uh, you know, to get the permit. But we have the engineering going, we have the trusses getting built, it's taken so long, and if you know that it takes about six months for the trusses to be built. So we have the engineering going, we have the trusses getting built. And I talked to Miss Heather Murray a couple times here, and she's advising me how to do the permit. And um, so what's going on now is we're waiting for the trusses to be done, or at least signed and sealed, and then they have to go to the engineering company, and then they have to approve that and sign and seal it, and then bring everything back to the city here to get the permit going. So it's just taking time. I mean, we're doing everything, but it's just about time. But 60 days, I mean, you're off. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. But the you property was posted September. Just to give us the permit. The, I'm sorry, what were you saying? The, the property was posted in September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and I, is, right? the, the, I posted the property initially in September. I posted it, uh, at the, whatever I saw over there, that I had to cut the grass, the grass was high. That's the only, whatever you put, that's the only sin that I see, I think. Uh, and after that, the, Hurricane came, we cleaned up everything, then the hurricane came, and then we cleaned up. But other than that, we're working on it, we bought it to fix it and to live in it. And I have all the engineering papers here, all the trust companies, paper, you know, but we're just waiting for it. It's just taking time. Okay. Um, I mean, we just gave another property under 90 days, so is, is that an issue for you? That's not an issue with the city, no. Okay. Um, can I show you all the drawings of the engineering, what's going on? I mean, we, I'm hopefully soon I'll have all the paperwork for the city to start up the permit. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we want this to proceed with a t in a timely fashion is you can see the property is not really secure. Right. Uh, and although right now there has been no uh, vagrant activity that I've been able to notice, uh, very close to here we, we actually are removing a homeless camp and I don't want any of that to move up into this area. Okay, yeah, it, so it, essentially you can access the interior of the house at this point from? That's correct. Okay. Um, so, I'm, did you have something in, that you, any papers you wanted to hand yeah. me? I thought I heard, I, I think he's, oh, you wanna?
Are those copies? Yeah, do you need copies made? I mean, I have more copies. You, you have more copies? copies? You can call the engineer, their name is over there. You can call the trust company, it's a trust work. They're working on it. Well, I'm not going to call anyone. Today is the hearing date, so. Um, so you're saying 90 days for what? I didn't get it. It would be 90 days to, no, but this is a violation of the IPMC that you've brought. So it's not to just obtain the permit, it is to actually. It's to, to repair the facility. Repair, yeah, the, repair or remove. Yeah. Repair or remove, no man, we want to repair. And we need at least six months to repair it. If you, I mean, if you know what's going on, there is six month waiting list for the dresses to be drawn, to be, you know, made. So I didn't expect that time to be, you know, the, the problem like this. But if you call any trust company, they won't even give you, you know, you need six months. Well, again, I mean, the problem I have, I, it is a, it is significant, the damage, and it being open essentially to access the interior of the house. Um, and the time for compliance was given for the end of October, correct? That's correct. All right. Can I see, the, can I see what, what's the complaint? I didn't see anything. Please, I, don't I, think, I think you've got no, the... Uh, you sent me? I mean, I never received anything. Um, we All posted the property and sent it certified. It's my grass is high, you have to cut it, which we did. And that's it. The, um, uh, I think you picked up a package of it. The of pictures? The, uh, yeah, and uh, the, the uh, notice and pictures of the notice uh, and everything. We also sent it certified. I mean, I don't see any notices. Can you show me? I mean, I don't know. I only see pictures. All right, so you've submitted floor plans and elevations. And electrical plans. All right. Um, That is also posted on the property, and, and we, we do both. Okay. And I mean, I never received the only thing I saw is to cut the grass, which I did when the whole thing came, and then it was, you know. At, at this point, we're uh, concerned mostly if uh, whatever time it's going to take to. Uh, that uh, Your Honor will give them for uh, coming into compliance, um, but um, maybe in the meantime, they've got to uh, secure the structure somehow. The city might be able to work with them on time, but Is there anything it's temporary we can do for the time being so that uh, we can close off the house so it's not easily accessible to get indoors? Because we're obviously in the process so if we can do anything to make it so it doesn't end up like a homeless shelter, which we go there just about often enough so it doesn't happen. But anything temporary, because we're obviously getting it in the works. Would the city, I mean, I guess, would the city consider that to be in compliance with this? No, it would not be in compliance. What the, what the city would do then is uh, maybe uh, offer up a continuance but it's not going to be in compliance until either the, the structures are moved or the walls are repaired. Right. You know, Steve, I don't, I'll add to that. I think we'd be comfortable with giving them 
um, some time to secure it. Um, and then time to obtain the permit and then we'd work with them on the permit time because you're saying six months to completion. So is I would in, in, in April I'm hoping I can start on the dresses and the walls and everything. I, I would be more up for giving them the six months to finish it if they secured it within 10 days and obtained the permit in 60. I mean, if you guys give me the permit fast enough, you know, I'm almost ready to give up, you know. If, you, if you're already close with the engineer, you should be right at that end point. So getting in 60 days should be easy. Okay. So you're saying we have to secure it within 10 days? Yes. 10 days of today, it has to be, the structure has to be. Secured. That would be my suggestion, secure it so people can't get in. Okay, so um, something. So bordered up. We just don't want somebody getting in there and getting hurt. That's okay. the main and thing we're looking for. Like, sit, like orange safety fence that you see on. Now on this particular thing, you need, need something like boarding up any uh, doorways, windows, um, and uh, because I know the back door is just wide open, um, they have to be boarded up to uh, stop people from just walking in. That orange fence is, is not gonna be enough. Can you call me when you wanna get checked this way you go through it? I, oh yeah, I'll give you my card, sure. Sounds good. Okay, so um, if to summarize that, it would be um, it would be ten days to secure the building. Sixty, no, sorry, yeah, nine. But yours was it one hundred and twenty days. It was. You said ninety days to obtain the permit. 60 days, if they've already started with the engineer, they should be at that last stage. So 60 days should be enough time. Okay, but there's really, I mean, this, at least this um, violation is for the exterior surface, so it's not failure to obtain a permit. I'd be willing to say 10 days to secure and then the six months. Yeah, and that's that's why I was like, 10 days to secure it, 60 days to obtain the permit to start the work, mm -hmm. and that would give them the six months to finish the work. So giving them steps in order to do to make sure that, that we follow along and, All right. and get it done quickly. Okay. And okay, is there in six months? Can you give me a date for six months? August 8th. All right. Is there anything else to add from Not on this either case. party? Okay. All right. Um, I am going to find that the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case files exhibit A, and I'm admitting this um, folder uh, turned in by the respondent. Uh, as Exhibit B, which contains a blank, a blank building permit application, but it also has emails from an engine, it looks like a trust company and a boundary survey, as well as fire restoration and interior renovation plans for this address. That will be Exhibit B. And I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged, and that, uh, Respondent will do the following. By four o'clock PM on February 18th, 2023, uh, you will um, secure the outside of the property. And with by, let's see, 60 days would be April 9th, 2023 you will, uh, which is 60 days, obtain the permit for the work to repair the uh, exterior of the house. And then by August 8th of 2023, which is six months, uh, complete the repairs to the outside of the house. All right. Um, and, um, in the event respondent does not comply, now I want I want to be clear: if they miss the 10 days, does are you 
requesting that the fine begin to run at that point or only at no, the end uh, of the six at, months? Not at that point, uh, because uh, what we'll do is if they do not um, have the structure secure in the 10 days, <clears throat> then we'll, what we'll do is run an abatement and okay. the city will secure it and then right. they will be charged for that. So the, the $150 per day would only start after the six months That's is, correct. is uh, has run, so that would be after August 8th of 2023, all right? And that's $150 a day. Um, so a fine in the amount of $150 per day will be imposed um, after August 8th, 2023. For each day the violation continues past the aforestated date, the respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you stay in contact with the code in inspector so he knows that you're complying with those deadlines. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right, the next case is 23-102, 2785 West Covington Drive. Oh, it's the same yeah, My name is okay. Steve Brockoff. I'm employed with the city of Deltona and as an enforcement officer. Uh, this was GEL case 23-102, uh, city of Deltona versus Michael Anthony Batar. Property address is uh, 2785 West Covington, uh, Deltona. Uh, the parcel ID is 813032 830040. Uh, this is a, a violation of uh, um, the uh, the pool ordinance, and uh, at this juncture, I would like to uh, withdraw this particular case um, at this point. But I will be monitoring. I was out at the property this morning. Um, there was a very strong smell of uh, chlorine. Uh, although the the pool water is opaque and not really totally clean because of the fire, there's there's no way they can run the pump. But we will be monitoring to make sure that they maintain a, a four foot barrier to make sure that people cannot get in that pool. So at this particular, I'd like to respectfully uh, withdraw this case. Okay, it's withdrawn. Thank you. Good. Yes, sir. Okay, this is 23-044, uh, 1601 April Avenue. My name is Josie Mar Jimenez. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DL-23-044, the City of Deltona versus Veles Magdalena. The property address is 1601 April Avenue, Deltona, Florida 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-014-10040. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance, Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, which states that any owner, authorized agent, who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code or to cause any such work to be done shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. The corrective action for said violation is you must obtain a permit. Applications must be submitted to the City of Deltona, 2345 Providence Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The structure must meet all requirements of the city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact the office with the permit number when obtained. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent per certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. 
All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. On June 17, 2022, I was called out to a location where I found a storage or shed structure in the backyard of this property. At that point, I informed Ms. Velez that she must obtain a permit for the shed per city ordinances. She informed me that the shed was there when she bought the property and didn't know that it required a permit. I gave her ample amount of time to obtain the permit with City Hall. Ms. Fellis did come into City Hall to inquire about the permit on July 8, 2022, concerning her violation and issues. At that point, she was informed that certain things needed to be done first before the permit can be issued. As she was instructed from the permitting department to move the shed in the appropriate measurements and it is too close and going into the easement of her property. Ms. Fellis reached out to my assistant director on July 15th, informed my director that she did not have the funds available to pay for the permit that day and requested a time of 30 days to return and pay for the permit. She did communicate this information and for that I gave her an extension to be able to obtain the permit. I went back to the property on August 15th and found that the shed was still present with no permit obtained. Ms. Fellis informed me that she was planning on selling the property within six months. I still informed her as the present property owner, she is still responsible for obtaining a permit. I posted a notice of violation on August 26th. Ms. Fellis received another extension of two more months to obtain a permit for the shed with still not receiving compliance. Ms. Velas has had a total of 232 days to comply with the city ordinances and has still not obtained a permit for the shed. I went by the property again on January 26. A notice of hearing was posted onto the property and today I saw the shed or storage structure in the backyard and again, no permit has been obtained. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um, Ma'am, do you want to state your name and address for the record? Yes, ma'am. Magdalena Velez in 1601 April Avenue, Deltona, Florida. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to tell me about your case? Yes, ma'am. Um, from the start, the very first day, it was a false accusation that I had um, chickens or roosters in my backyard. So just to clear up the whole issue, I decided to allow her to go through my backyard with it was her and another young lady. Um, so they checked the backyard out, wasn't no issue. She said that's correct, that it was false accusations, that there are no roosters or chickens. Then a couple days later, she did end up writing a citation on the door saying that my shed was out of line or whatever the case was. So um, she did give me time. We were communicating very well. And then I came up to here. And I spoke to him, actually, because me and her were going back and forth. She kept telling me, you know, go ahead and talk to the, somebody higher than me. So I said, okay, that's fine. I came up here. I spoke to him. He told me that if I was to bring the survey up here, they'd issue me a permit with no problem because due to the structure already being there when I bought the house. Um, so the, it is on the inspection. You know, it says aluminum shed and everything. When I came back, he was no longer here. I came back a couple days later to bring the paper. He wasn't here and they sent me over to somebody on the right hand side to talk about the permits. He then told me it was over a hundred and something dollars to get the permit and that was out of my budget. So I did say, may I have an extensive time um, so I can get the money. I live by myself. I pay over 2000 in mortgage and I'm still trying to you know, provide for myself. So it has been a lot. I am working on moving still to this day. Um, within that time, I was moving and then my AC unit broke. So due to that, I haven't had AC and I have to, you know, have that fixed in order to sell the house. So I've been working on that as well as trying to get the permit. The permit was never the issue. It was the price. And I did come back a little bit after that. And he, I believe it was him or it was somebody else that told me that it was 40 to $50 for the permit, that it was no longer 120 something dollars. So that was a big difference. And I, you know, that's a big difference. I could have been paid that. Um, but then when I came and the other dude told me that it was 120 something dollars, he told me I had to, I brought him in the paper and that's when he was supposed to, you know, issue the permit. Then I, they said I had to move it two feet over. 
So that was like a big problem with that. I tried to call multiple different places. They're trying to charge me over 700 to 1500 to even move the shed two feet. So um, I've been trying to work away, find a resolution for this. Being that I'm living by myself, it is a lot of money to get the shed moved literally two feet. A permit, no problem, I can get that, but the paying all that money just to get the shed moved two feet when I didn't place it there, that's been a lot for my pockets right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just not exactly sure where to go at this point. Um, I am trying to sell the house as soon as possible within the next three to three and a half months. I'm waiting for, I think around March, so that way the sales can go higher, the market can go higher, and I know that's a good time to sell your house. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what to do if you guys, what exactly you guys want to do with this. So is it your intention to keep keep the shed? Um, I mean, because I suppose another option is to remove it, correct? Yes, and I informed her that that was another option. She can just remove the shed or move it um, if she wanted to. I, I'm not the building department, so I don't know what they told her as far as, I know I got an email about it does have to be moved out of the easement area, which would be about two feet. Um, they also informed her that she could maybe move the shed a different direction since it's wider one way, and that might help with her obtaining the permit. But, um, you know, she did everything she said. She did inform me that she's moving, but again, like I said, I, she's still responsible. She's the property owner, and we've mm -hmm. given her about 232 days to obtain a permit. Um, and right. you know, like I said, we've given her plenty of extensions. I've worked with her as much as I could. I've spoken to her plenty of times. Um, I mean, at this point, it's just obtaining the permit or removing the shed. Right. Um, and remind me, you are seeking how long yes. to apply? So yes, so the city would like to request 14 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $100 a day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. The reason I chose 100 is because of the timing. It's been over 232 days. And then according to that as well, I've given her We've given her a lot of extensions on top of that as well. This was back in June of last year. All right. Um, all right, did you have anything else to add, ma'am? Um, yeah, I was just honestly a bit confused because when I first talked to him, he said he was going to be able to issue me the permit as long as I bring in the paper that says that the shed is there. I mean, it says on the whole inspection, on the survey, you know, I. I personally feel as they should have handled this before they sold the house and it should not have been put on me and due to them doing this inspection they should have said hey these are not the right requirements you need to fix this before you even sell the house which I get it it's now you know it's in my hands now but he right. didn't say he was going to be able to issue me a permit if I brought this information in and fortunately he wasn't there that day and I got sent to somebody else and now we're here. Yeah, well, typically, if it's in the setback, you're not going to be, they're not going to be able to issue the permit. Is that, I assume that's the issue? No, she could be issued a permit. The, the only thing is, as part of that permit process, within that six months, she would have to get it moved in order to be able to have it final. So she could get a permit and come down here tomorrow, apply for the permit, get the permit. And then you would have six months to move it. Yeah, I'll be out of here by then for sure. So if that's a possibility and we can get this case dropped, I'll come up here tomorrow or whenever I get paid and settle this up. Right, okay, so because the violation is just failure to obtain the permit, so that can be obtained and then subsequently it can be moved is what you're saying? Yeah, it can be, it can be moved to be in compliance with where it's gotta be for the setbacks. And that would give them six months in order to do that. In order to complete the work. As long as the work is completed. Right, right. okay. All right. Um, uh, then, and so then to obtain the permit, 14 days, you feel that you'll be able to do that? I should be able to do it. Um, can I get an exact um, number of how much it actually is? Because I just want to get the exact amount. I was hearing 120. 50, 40, I just want the exact amount of how much it was for the exact permit. I, I can't the, speak to that, but maybe The yes. building department would be able to advise you of that. Okay. Yeah. 
and perhaps if you call before you come down to the city hall, that might help. Okay. Um, all right, I am going to uh, find here that the notices were properly given in this case. The case file is admitted as, as Exhibit A. And I'm going to find the respondent in this case is in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, which is 14 days. In the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of, I'm gonna do $75. $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you keep in touch with her and uh, let her know when the permit's been issued. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll be here tomorrow if you need to come in. Okay. All right, this is case 22-182. Uh, it's a Massey case 3001 Surf Drive. Ma'am, can you repeat that case number? Yes, 22-182. Uh, Thank you. Three zero zero one Surf Drive. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Officer Scott. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as code compliance officer. This will be Massey case DEL two two one eight two. The city of Deltona versus Robert C. Aman. The property address is three zero zero one Surf Drive. Parcel ID number is eight one three zero three three zero four zero zero two zero. The statutory requirements for a notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing. Notice of code violation was sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraisal's record. In addition, both notices were posted at the prop posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. It was ruled on June 22nd, 2022, that the property owner was given 21 days to remove the debris from around the property. The owner did not comply, did not come into compliance within those 21 days and has been receiving a fine of $100 a day since July 14th, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $21,000 over 210 days. As of today, the property remains in violation for the debris. The city is requesting that the fines continue at $100 per day. And it was $100? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Sir, will you state your name and address for the record? My name is Robert Amon. I live at 3001 Surf Drive here in Deltona. Okay. Did you have something you wanted to tell me well, about your case? I, uh, this is the first I've heard that I actually have a running fine going and that I owe the city $21,000 now. So uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to say. It was uh, noted he was here. We, we were here... Uh, on the 25th, a few weeks ago, and they dismissed the last case when you pointed it out that they weren't properly filing. And then this one popped up on my door the day after we were here on the 25th. Uh, but yes, I have no idea that I owe the city $21,000. I don't even know how I was notified of that. For the record, he was here on the special magistrate hearing on June 22nd, 2022. Okay. I, I must have been here for a hearing. I don't believe I've ever not showed up for a hearing. All right. Um, the violation that was found at the time by the special magistrate was 
accumulation of waste, yard trash, uh, and debris, correct? Yes, ma'am. And these are, are pictures that you're showing me, are they from today? Yes, ma'am. Or, yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so there's significant amount of debris in the yard still. Um, so, and the time to comply was given to what date? It was given 21 days. 21 days from July, June 22nd. Yes, ma'am. So All right. July 14th would have been. Okay. All right. Well, there's still a significant amount of debris in the yard. Um, so uh, I'm going to find that the order was not complied with in a timely fashion. Um, so I find uh, so I'm the notice. I find the notice was properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case file as Exhibit A, um, along with the. You have the pictures from today are in here, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Should be. And. Um, Oh, I don't see them. Yeah, I, I mean, there are building materials there. The storm damaged the roof, and I have a permit Forward. to repair the roof now. Uh, that's part of why I was purchasing building materials, which they basically said were debris, but they're not. Um, anyway, Your Honor, I'm, I'm just stunned by what I was just told, so uh, I... Okay, well, and, and I, uh, what's that? Um, you know, that I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but it's clear from the previous order from the special magistrate that you were ordered to comply by a certain date I mean, and you have that it. antenna that's strapped to the post there came down in the hurricane. Uh, the right. new antenna in the box was just recently purchased. Okay. It's not debris, it's a new antenna that is going up, but anyway. Well, I see quite a bit of other debris as well. Um, so I, I'm gonna find that you have not come into compliance. So um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case, the case file is exhibit A, and I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case, and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order, and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. This is 23-120-859 Saxon Boulevard. Give me one moment. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23120. The City of Deltona versus Garcia, Johan Diaz, and Cruz Silvia. The property address is 859 Saxon Boulevard, Deltona, Florida 32725. The parcel ID number is 813. 011140370. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-114, which states that the storage of buildings, building materials, commercial and industrial equipment materials, objects, or waste 
relating to commercial or industrial uses or any equipment, materials, or objects that are not incidental to a residential use shall be prohibited. Corrective action for said violation is to cannot have the materials delivered to the property. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed <coughs> with the property appraiser's record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case became, uh, began as a residential complaint. Uh, any additional photos that were added to the case marked, were marked as exhibits have been provided by the reporting party, Manuel Lobana. On November 20, uh, oh, excuse me, on November 17, 2022, an associate officer opened a case for an outside storage at this address. The homeowner was advised of the violation with the courtesy of a door hanger left by the officer. The homeowner removed the, the commercial materials from the property. The homeowner did reveal in a conversation that materials were delivered to the home for, for a business, but are removed within days. Uh, the materials have been observed at the front portion of the garage door on numerous occasions. On January 20th, 2023, an officer visited the residence and observed the buckets stacked up near the garage. He made contact with the, with the resident and stated that the delivery materials at the home need to be taken to a storage visit, or they need to be taken to a storage facility. The officer advised the resident that the commercial materials could not be delivered to the residential address. The city would like to request 10 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay, can you, what, what is it that's being so delivered? What, what, what's, uh, a, the materials are being delivered and basically uh, set outside on numerous days of the week. Uh, the owner has, has uh, we have talked a couple times that they're, they're there maybe a day or two until he can either put them into the garage or take them to a storage facility where he keeps them. But there's deliveries going on and uh, this is one uh, occasion and then there's another, there's a couple occasions that are, are listed not only in these photos but in other uh, material provided to the city. Okay, so it's building material, is it building it's, materials? It's, uh, building material I think is, uh, they look like buckets, so they're probably, I don't know if this, uh, for doing flooring or something of that painting. Or answer that question if you let me. I'll give you, I'll give you a chance. Okay, so. Okay. I can't be specific exactly what they are, but they are, there is, it, it was shared with me that there is a delivery that goes on there. Okay, uh, so it's flooring and buckets. Um, basically, uh, not, not for the resident, but for, for business materials. For business, okay. Um, and how do you know that it's for a business? Uh, I will share, share with me that he did, the, the gentleman does have his own own business when we, we talked about what, what was being actually brought to the property. He has a home business? Home, home not, not business. a home business, have not looked, uh, there's no home business listed at, at the property. Okay, but how do you know that the materials are not for residential purposes? It was in conversation with, with me when the uh, materials were, were at, questioned about how, what they were out and the other officer's notes to the uh, case that he uh -huh. had opened, that they were just, they were delivered here a couple days a week during the week and then they were soon moved off, whether it's one day, two days after they were delivered. Okay. Um, <coughs> Sir, did you want to state your name and address yeah. on the record? Uh, my name is Santos Cruz. I'm representing my daughter, Sylvia Cruz, uh, 859 Saxon Boulevard. And let me explain what's going on. My employer sends the material to my house. I pick it up and I take it to the storage unit. It's not an open storage. It stays there with a couple of days and that's the way. It's not my business. So my employer says it to, here, to the physical address, 
and I take it to the storage. It is non-flammable stuff. It's uh, epoxy for garage floors. It's epoxy for it's garage epoxy. floors? Exactly. And vinyl chips, because that's what I do. Okay. okay. You, you repair or no, seal I, floors? I install epoxy floors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but it's not, you know, they say that it's an open storage, but it's not. You just deliver there, I pick it up, and I take it to the storage. Well, it's being stored outside of your residential home. Um, already compliance with it. It's not, there's nothing there. I'm pretty sure they got a picture for today. And I'll show that the material. It's been gone for a long time. And lately, I've just taken it straight to the storage. Okay, do you have so pictures from today? Is, once, once yeah, there should be there, a picture from today. Is the guy sending you a... Once it gets there, they don't even give me a chance. They're already calling the city. The next day, the city's there. They don't even give me a chance to take it. So, and that's the problem. With, um, that's the dilemma I have. But I'm not running a business from my house. And that, that's from, yeah, today. Is it today? There, there was there was nothing there today at the yeah. time. The, the, the pictures had. Uh, okay. Uh, they, they, so they had compliance with the city. So the date of February 1st, 2023 was given to come into compliance. Um, so do you have pictures after February 1st, 2023? Yes, what's, what's today, today's picture would be the only one. Uh, okay, and they're in compliance at this time? At, at this time, uh, there was nothing out there as of today or the, or, I was okay. at, the, at the property yesterday, there was nothing out there as well, so. I would testify that the, I have not seen any material in at least the past two days at the property. Okay, so I'm not hearing any evidence that they have not, that he hasn't come into compliance by the date you ordered. It's uh, it basically the, the, the complaint was, was brought to our attention and if, after another officer had, had gone there and I was following up with the case, but in, in speaking with the resident, he's been notified of, you know, was could not happen and he was going to look into whether uh, store it off facility, get into purchasing a shed and put it on his property and then storing it. I said, if, if you do, you know, follow the proper procedures, get a permit and all that. And mm -hmm. since, since our talking, he has gone on to do that for me to meet that compliance type. Okay. So um, are you withdrawing the case? Or are you? Uh, I would like to know it's, uh, that if it's the, not a repeat, but to know that the case was open, the case has mm -hmm. uh, been presented, and though if it, if it was to occur again, that the, the fine could go on, or to, to be started if, at, at, at well, the first notice or first indication that there was deliveries continuing in the, in the storage. Mm -hmm. the materials were remaining outside more than two or three days in the case. Well, I can only do that if there's evidence that they did not comply beyond the date you gave for compliance, right. and I'm not hearing that. So I'm going to dismiss this case, but okay. that doesn't necessarily mean, sir, that he couldn't bring another case. So I hope that you continue to work towards whatever solution you have to store yeah. these items not outside because I don't want you to end up back here. So if that means doing, you know, a shed and getting your permit to, to appropriately do that or put them in your garage, you can't leave them outside, I think is, is what yeah, the I issue mean, is. At first they, gave, they said, oh, you got two days to, to take it. And then after that, it was like next day I was getting, you know, complaint about it. Mm -hmm. They, were, they first gave me a grace period, then they didn't. So that's why it kind of, kind of puzzled me. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going to dismiss this current case, but like I said, um, if it continues, that doesn't prohibit them from, yeah, exactly, from coming exactly, back. Yeah. All right? Yeah, I understand that. All right. Thank you, sir. I think there's a, one more. Oh, yeah, there's, there's another one? There's two more. Two more? Oh, two more. Two more. Oh, but these two are about the same, right? Different numbers, different case numbers. 
just a different case number, it's the same description. What? Yeah, it's the same description. Okay. Well, how was the first one here, too? Okay. Did I do the right one? Yes. Okay. Here's that one. All right. So this next one is 23 122. Same address, uh, 859 Saxon Boulevard. Go ahead. Right. My name is Todd Mead. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23122. The city of Deltona versus Garcia, Johan Diaz, and Sylvia Cruz. The property address is 859 Saxon Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-011-140-370. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-73. Loud, disturbing, or unnecessary noises, Section C. Thus, the following acts, among others, are declared to be loud, disturbing, and unnecessary noises in violation of this article. But this enumeration shall not be deemed to be exclusive, Section A. Some sounds may be such that they are not measurable or may not exceed the limits of limits set out in this article, but they may be excessive, unnatural, prolonged, unusual, and are a detriment to the public health, comfort, convenience, safety, welfare, or prosperity of the residents of the city. Corrective action in the said violation is to discontinue loud and disturbing noise in the neighborhood. The statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing Notice of code violation were sent certified to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including the photographs been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk, I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals that, of what I observed on the day they were taken. <coughs> Any additional photos added to this case marked as exhibits have been provided by the reporting party, Manuel Lobana. Uh, this case also began as a uh, resident complaint of the area, uh, noises, dog barking, received, received an affidavit in the city. Uh, on December 4th, 22, the city was notified uh, reporting party mentioned that the dog, there's long, the dog barks for long periods of time and is contained in the garage. The reporting party did mention that he tried to discuss the situation with his neighbor, was, but, not, but was not met with any help. I tried to make uh, contact with RP to discuss the issues at hand. Uh, spoke to him over the phone when he was uh, traveling over the road, so he was not present. Him and I did not have a personal meeting at that time around in December. On about December 25th, uh, there was an, a contact made with the resident at the house and a mention of the barking dog complaint was brought to their attention for the residents at the party. Uh, at that time, uh, early December, the affidavit had not been received with the city. The RP was then, uh, was then available to provide the city his affidavit on December 22nd, 2022. I visited the property on January 9th, 2023 to follow up on the affidavit information. The case for the barking dog has, is, is being monitored for 30 days for any further complaints. The owner was mailed the, the barking dog letter to help alleviate the barking dog issue at hand on January 20th, 2023. Uh, the reporting party has then followed up and reported more disturbing noises coming from the property that consisted of loud music and loud car noises, such as radio and or tire squealing. Uh, 
the city would like to request seven days to the prop for the property to come into compliance on a fine of 25 or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. The property was posted for the notice of hearing on the 25th of January. Uh, since that time of the posting, which mentioned this for the noise, uh, there were two incidences that were reported. Uh, I do have the CAD reports for that on uh, 128, excuse me, 128, 2023. There was a call into the no loud music noise. I do have a copy if you would like to see that for this one. Uh, that the police, uh, sheriffs, Bruce County sheriffs came out to the property and discussed the loud music with the resident. And then again, uh, here on uh, the 5th of February here, the deputies were called out again to the property for loud music. Uh, we tried to contact the deputy to uh, be here tonight to help, help in the, their, their report, to follow up with the report, to give a better inquiry what they witnessed but is in the report that they did say the music was very loud on that February 5th. All right. And I do have uh, Mr. Lobana is, he, is here to, to speak on the behalf of what he's been experiencing with, uh, to make, to bring the attention to the city, what uh, was, go was going on and. Okay, uh, and do you, sir, do you have copies of these reports? Uh, no, I just got what I gave I you. I can give these. Do you have an extra copy yes. for him? Thank you. Is that the cop? This Police? Is, this is the, 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 on the 28th. The policeman. Yeah. This was just here uh, last weekend. Well, this was just uh, a couple days ago. This was the message with the deputy. Special Master, unfortunately, we don't have audio. But I do have the order here in the laptop. I could bring this laptop up to you for all the videos provided. It, it, you're saying it just won't play over the loudspeakers? All right, yes. Okay. I'm gonna bring this, ma'am. I'm gonna bring this up to you. And these, these um, audio files, they were recorded by? That uh, Mr. Lombano had, had provided those to the, to the city for okay. us. They're not uh, anything that I, I did or was uh, present to, but they were provided as, as information on the loud music, the, the tire squealing, and things okay. that, that just some of the incidents that he's, he's been. But the, and these were recorded by? 
But, Mr. but uh, some of them had, were just, were, uh, yes, uh, by his uh, cameras at his home or, or by, I, I, I don't know how okay. we, some Mr. of the Mr. Lobena? Yes. Okay. There are uh, some of the, do the dog barking incidents. Uh, Is there more? I believe the point for that one was the loud music because he lives far away. Okay. Yeah, we're going to. Yes, for the record, he just, he was explaining that they should, the files are labeled with music, if that's what it is. Yeah, when I had reviewed the, the uh, information, I, I then labeled what I could detect of hearing the music on, the, because there was still pictures, videos, and then uh, basically a reco recordings, it looks like, that uh, were provided. So I labeled the ones where I, I heard music, that's why I, how I laid them on the flash drive. Okay. <laughs> we do also have that police report from Sunday morning when they were out there, Sunday afternoon. What's that? We have the police report from Sunday afternoon on how loud the music was. Where where does it say that? The, where they uh, it's highlighted the highlight down in the orange just below that the officer's remarks on the uh, 25 2023 report CAD report. Okay, so. to find it? Yeah, yep, I do. We, we had asked for that deputy to be here, but unfortunately she was out sick today. All right. Well, let me, let me listen. There, there's multiple bit files here. For the respondent, have you heard these files? No, I haven't. And I would like to, uh, if it's possible, I want to copy every pictures he sent in the video. Is that possible? 
We can get you copies of everything that's on it. Yeah. What's that? He's asking for all the videos and everything. There's where we can get all that to him. <laughs> I think that's a violation of privacy. I have to pursue that. Potentially, he's recording. Can you hear what's playing? Yeah. From here, it doesn't sound loud at all. I could hear it. See, that's a car going by. It's louder than the music. I can't hear you when that's playing. I said, that's a car that went by, and I could hear that, and it's louder than the music. You see, the problem here is the two-way traffic there. It's a lot of traffic. Oh, hold on, because I can't hear and listen. I hear you. So, okay. I've got a cup, I think two more.
All right, I think this is the last one. <clears throat> This is a video of the, looks like from the front door, the dogs barking. What time was that? The other time? I don't think this has, it's not labeled, but it is dark outside. Could have been eight o'clock, could have been seven o'clock. Past nine o'clock, they don't bark. Um, for the city, are you asking me to hear from Mr. Labena as a witness? Yeah. No, speak. Yes. 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 All right. Okay, can you state your name and address for the record? Hey, my name is Juan Lobaina. I'm, uh, I'm living in A60 Saxon Boulevard at Tona, Florida. Okay, and you live across the street from yes. the respondent? Yes. Okay. Did you want to yes. tell me about this case? Yes. The thing is, um, around a month ago, around f maybe five months, um, dog started boring me at night. So I spoke to him like around three, four times. Can you speak up a little bit? And I spoke to him like three, four times nicely. And uh, the last time I spoke to him was on, on one day around 7 a.m. And uh, I provide all the video to um, to Danny. I don't know if they have it all over there. And um, he told me, uh, you know what? You cross in the line, so do whatever you want. So at this time, I tried to seek help from the city. And uh, I spoke to... Um, uh, Richard, then I spoke to Danny because Danny speaks Spanish. The last time I spoke to uh, Mike Gibson, just trying to seek help. So everybody told me uh, the only way we can do something is if, if you make an affidavit and um, provide some proof. So at this point, I said, What kind of proof? And they say, You have to recall. So um, at this point, I'm, I'm not trying to violate his, like, his um, privacy anyway. From what I know, they're outside their house, so is I don't know the law. Is I'm, I'm not recording inside the house. They are outside, so. So you, are, yeah, that was I wanted to ask. So you can hear the music and the dogs barking yes, inside your house. Yes, yes, because my my door is a, across the street, just in front of his garage, and the thing is, they keep the dogs on, on the cage all the time, so, and they take it out the dog one by one, by one by one. So when they take out one, the other one is barking because they want to come out, and and does happen anytime. So it's, I every time they they want, they open the garage to take the dogs out, that happen. So. 
they stop with the dogs, I spoke to him, uh, I come to the city, then uh, the city goes spoke to him, and they change a little bit, but then they start with the music, it's on, when they get like home around 2 a.m. from work or something like that, they wake me up, and it's not because I'm looking at him, because it's, they wake me up, so I, I, I need to see what's going on outside. So at this point, I, and they told me I have to provide proof, so I'm doing just what the city told me. I'm living in Deltona for almost 10 years. I never had an issue with no, nobody. And so you're being woken up at two or three in the morning, is what you're saying? Uh, yes. By and, music? And by the music from his son, when he get home, like back from work or something like that. How often would you say that happens? I'm sorry? How often would you say that happens? Um, I would say whenever his son wants. So the, on, the, on this last day, this don't happen too much. But that's happened, you know. So and I provide some video for to um, Tani on, on the video. And one night I was uh, recording him, and he see me, him recording. And I think Richard see the video, and Richard told me yes, I can see. He he say he see, he see me recording him, and what he he do this to me, like keep recording. Like mm -hmm. I take it that way, and he opened the door for a car, so I can hear the music more loud. So he's doing everything on purpose. And they have another video over there. I was, it was around midnight, and I go spoke to him and his daughter and his son, and they cross the street. Then we was talking over there about the issue with his car because they have a sport car, they make a noise, so I don't know why, for no reason, when they come home, they do woom woom on the cars, you know, so it's no reason to do that, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And just, the video. I don't, I don't wanna, he, my, my purpose is no, he get, like, no. nothing is, have peace in home, he have peace in home, and that's it, that's, that's my only purpose, you know. I, 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 can you repeat that? My my only purpose is he he have like peace on home and I have peace on my home because I have the right to sleep, and I take medication for sleep and I spoke to him. I'm not lying. I have medication. I take solpidem to sleep because I'm a truck driver. Have I cannot sleep very well, so I wake up really easy for for whatever. So that's why I'm trying to speak to him and. And he was nice with me, like at the beginning. But one day I spoke to him, and he got mad at me. So okay, and that's why I seek any solution with this from the city. The video that we that was played of the music. Yes. Did, when was when was the music playing? What time of day? I have uh, I have all the video on the on the phone, so you can hear better because I from what I'm here on the computer is not you can you cannot hear everything, but on the phone if you look it's, it's really hard. And on Sunday I called the see on the other thing the last Sunday, I think they had the music really high, so I called the police. The police come and they put it down a little bit. As soon as the police leave, they put it up and down, up and down. Then around 8 p.m. My neighbor, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know his name. They he come, spoke to them about the music because I know his mom is sick and uh, his mother is sick. So as soon they spoke to him, they turn off the music, they close the garage and done. I understand you can have a party, you know, one day and everything, but it's no reason to put the music high for just to bother the neighbor, you know. And the, other, and the other thing is with the dogs, and they wake me up around 5 a.m., 6 a.m. So the proof I provide today is is only when I have the time to catch, but that can happen anytime. Because they, for at this point right now, because they know they have an issue, they, they are doing things smart, you know? They put the music for five minutes, then keep it off. So when the police come, they don't see nothing. So. Uh, at this point, like my intention is not is not he get hurt, like hurt or <laughs> or nothing. It's like like I told Richard last time, he was a good neighbor to me at the beginning. Then he get mad at me. If he want to be my neighbor again, I don't have any issue. I don't like I don't I don't like to have enemy, you know. And that's it. Then now the other option. Is they change every time something different and like yesterday he's showed me his middle finger 
Every time I show up on my window, his middle finger. Today, he showed me his middle finger. Yesterday, after Todd go by his house, when he go inside, he leave this hand inside and do something like this to me. I'm, 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 I'm here just to resolve the problem. I'm not going like to play in his game. Today, when I go to school, pick up my kids, um, his son who drive the sport car, water side, and I look at him, he look at me, he say, so I'm not here to have any, I don't wanna have problem with nobody, but you know, so. Okay, um, can I uh, hear from the respondent? Can you, you know state your you, name it, and it, address yeah, for the record? Yeah, my name is Santo Cruz. It's two sides of the story. He paints it out to be really bad. I complied with a lot of stuff he said in the beginning. I would close the garage, nine o'clock, because I know. But then when it upset me, when on a, on a Saturday night, 11 o'clock, the dogs bark, I close the garage, because I know he complains. Then on Sunday morning, at seven in the morning, I'm walking the dogs. And then he comes and complain again. It's a what weekend. was, was no, the no, same no. day. It's my turn. Okay, I'm trying. We gotta live a life. I can't live based on him. I know the noise, we have control a lot. We do get loud, I agree on that. My son has stopped, he's not putting the music anymore. Once he comes down the neighborhood, he turns it off. Last weekend with a cop, that was my uh, son-in-law. He was wrong on that, because he, he it was too loud. The weekend before, weekends we, we watch car, we pull music. You know, we want to enjoy life. We work hard all week. For now, that we got to comply to him. To a certain degree, I could do it. But really, come on. What are we supposed to do? Stay home, lock our doors, don't come out? Now we, we look around because the cameras are recording us every day, all the way to the backyard? That's an invasion of privacy there. We can't do nothing. Because he has his camera recording us, and he's recording us on purpose. My, my camera's in there before you was, my, my camera's was installed before. Hold on, it's my turn. Yeah, please I'm don't turn. interrupt. Okay. No. His camera is all, you see it. If I open my garage door, it goes all the way to the door, to the house. If I open my front hall door, his camera goes all the way through. So now I'm, I'm like, wow, well, I can't do nothing because he's recording, he's sending everything over here. What am I supposed to do? I'll comply whatever you guys tell me to do. Stop the noise, I will stop the noise. But we got a life to live too. We got to draw the line where? Um, so would, can you, <coughs> you described that you have been trying to, I guess, I, cur curtail the amount of noise. I did, you know, I did at the beginning because the dogs would come from the front and I'll take them to the back and they barked. Now I'm taking them through the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was to be nice doing that for him. So you're but, taking him out in the backyard? No, I take him straight to the backyard because I know he's calling the city every other day and they come in every other day. So I take him through the house to the back. Yeah, they bark, but like I said, it's a two lane. If you hear, you hear more the cars and the music. It's loud, and, and this, there was an incident that his wife came yelling on my son that he rubbed the car, and he was parked already a half hour. It was a white car that went by, and when they go by, they make noise. And we get blamed for every noise that goes by, we get blamed. It's, it's traffic. Okay. I don't know, if he, if he make a soundproof room where he could sleep, I, I don't know. Put some ammo, I have no idea. All right, does the city have anything else to add? Uh, if not, it's time to think that there's an understanding between two parties that they they need to basically get along and, and, the, and the, the noise to stop and everybody would be in compliance with what, what the cities have to deal with the noise issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Can I say something? What's that? Can I say one more thing? Yes. There were twice he called the cops on us. It was a party. When the cop comes, he opened, opened the door of my grandkids. There was no party. To 
two or three times he's done that. So why are you gonna call that? There's no party. Who? <laughs> there was no party? There was no party. My kids and the grandkids playing around. Uh. Well, the office. Now, now I can't put my grandkids play around in the front yard because he's recording it. He's recording it on purpose. Sometimes you got a security camera and it pans out a little bit, fine. But it, this is intentionally. So. Well, I'll I comply whatever the city says for me to comply. That's about. That's what I want to go by the rules of the city. Right. I mean, it does state in the the. Um, the report of the police officer that he was unable to he or she was unable to hear the homeowner speaking from approximately yes. three feet away. Yeah, yes. that was uh, last Sunday, I think it was last weekend, and I wasn't there, and that was my son-in-law. And my wife told him that he got kind of a little uh, upset with the officer, and he, all he had to do was lower it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why. But if you see that when they came the weekend before, they, they lowered the music, she, she wrote down good stuff. But this week I had, yeah, that was my son-in-law. Okay. But I'll, I'll deal with him and I'll, take, I'll, I'll, I'll comply with whatever the city says. All right. Um, so I have the, um, okay, I find the, the notices in this case were properly given. Um, the, uh, now, what I'm admitting into evidence is everything in the case file is Exhibit A plus the police reports um, and the videos. Did you have a question, Myron? No. Okay. Um, and the videos. Um, I'm I'm not inclined to find a violation at this point. Um, to me, listening to all of the videos. Um, the road noise was far louder than the other, you know, disturbances. I, you know, I have basically one police report from one incident that says he, you know, couldn't speak to the to the owner, um, or not the owner, but I guess it was your relative my, yeah. relative that was. Does anyone can you show a video from his his son car on the phone? Because I don't think they show I've you on the computer. Well, I, don't I mean, the I've same already. One because please don't interrupt. I've already listened to multiple videos, so you know those were the videos that were presented to me in evidence. That's what I'm going to listen to. So, I, I mean, I sympathize. I hope that you all can work together to come up with a compromise. Um, and to the respondent, I hope that you know you can be reasonable in terms of turning your music down. I don't want to see you back here again. Um, but at this point, I, I don't feel that the evidence was very compelling. That's why I don't, I don't speak to him anymore because the last time he told me do whatever you want. So. Okay. Well, I'm I am asking, please to cooperate, um, because again, I don't I don't want to see him back here. Um, but at this point, I'm not going to find a violation uh, of the of the city code, so I'm going to dismiss this case at this time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Another one. Okay, this case is 23-123-859 Saxon Boulevard. So the same address? Yes, excuse me. Okay, begin. What was that? I'm sorry. Is it okay to oh, begin? Oh yes, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, that, all right, that was. Uh, let's just start out. The, the video. Uh, well, we can see that. Uh, and the notation is the throwing stuff into the wooded area. That's basically information. It's based off the affidavit provided by uh, reporting party. That within his affidavit, he stated something of being thrown into the property. So that falls under the. Order, so I'll, I'll begin. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. 
This will be case number DEL 23123. The City of Deltona versus Garcia, Johan Diaz, and Cruz Silvia. The property address is 859 Saxon Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-011-140-370. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance, Section 50-4, Section 1, Subsection C, which states that it is unlawful and an offense against the city for any unauthorized person, entity, or corporation to do any solid waste upon the property of another. Florida State Statute 403.413. Corrective action for said violation is to discontinue from disposing of trash on other property or remove debris from the property. What's a piece of wood? The statutory requirements for no. The statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation that were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photos, have been marked as exhibits submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. Any additional photos added to this case, marks as exhibits have been provided by the reporting party, Manuel Lobena. Information on this case was received in the affidavit and photo and video file was provided to the city upon the submission of the affidavit. Homeowner and or resident is seen throwing something into the adjacent property that is on its home. The city at this time would like to request seven days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed upon until such time the property owners notify the city of compliance. And we're, we're gonna refer to uh, the affidavit submitted to the city uh, statement on the second page down towards the bottom, bottom third. Uh, <coughs> seen uh, throwing from the front yard by his truck and throwing empty bottle trash to his neighborhood land. That's basically, he's, it's evidence of the, the, through the video that there was something being thrown into the, the adjacent property to the resident. Um. This is kind of to get. Um. Can you play the video again? Danny, can you go back to that? I don't know how it works, I can't see. That's me blowing up. Maybe jump the paper. You stop it right there. Oh, go back just a little bit, Danny. Go back just before he goes to that sign. I, I don't think the only thing on the phone we can see there. I don't think he's a video. It's the same video. The same video. All right. You bring it. Myron can bring it forward. <laughs> if you go right before that, Danny, it appears that he's either taking a drink of something and then throwing it into the woods. Okay. Easier to see. You got a life. You don't got a life. No, no, com no, no conversations between. Oh, no, no comments yeah. about each other, please. I, yeah. Did it? Yeah, stay over here. Play it one more time. Oh, you want to see where it landed? Yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. All right. Um, so, I, I just, uh, for the city, you're asking me to find a violation 
and the time, the, the correction would be for them to go pick up that piece of trash? What, what that's, it, it's basically, we don't think he could find what was thrown out there, but just to, to, to know that this, he's been noted as disposing of what would be considered trash onto the adjacent property through the affidavit provided by the reporting party and that just just deceased or if it was noted that anything occurs in that manner to where something's disposed on the said property adjacent to that the city could find him $25 per day until it was either picked up or you know okay so yes until it's picked up you're saying yes if, if it was noted that he the say it was reported later that something else occurred in this in a time period after today that he would be responsible for either cleaning up whatever well was you're asking me to find a violation today right. of the uh, for which this is, incident and is. the corrective action i would give them time to comply and that would mean going and picking up the piece of trash that is part part, part of the corrective action or, or to cease, cease the okay. correct your owner he would need to go into the woods and clean clean up the mess that he's put into there right thank you all right, um, oh, resp the respondent, did you want, please state your name again for the record. Santa Cruz. <laughs> um, I'll go clean up whatever. Is, uh, I, I normally keep that area clean anyway, all the way around like that, so that's, that's not a problem. Okay, and what was the time for compliance that you were recommending? I believe I had seven days. Basically seven days. A week, a week. Does that seem reasonable to you? Yeah, because you're not going to really find nothing. I mean, it's all clean already. Okay, and it's twenty-five dollars a day that you're recommending. Okay. So, um, yes. He's going to go out there and inspect it, right? Yes, he would need to inspect it. Well, you need to contact him okay, when well, when you've yeah. when you've corrected it within the seven days, so that he knows you've come into it's, compliance. It's already corrected, but yeah, I'll, I'll double check. Okay. Um, all right, uh, I will, uh, I find that the uh, notices were properly given in this case. The um, case file is admitted as Exhibit A, and then uh, I suppose, well, and then we have the video also. I'll label that separately as Exhibit B, which is dated 12-17-2022. I find the respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on, um, what date would that be? Seven days? What's that? 15th. 15th. 13th? 15th. 15th, thank you. On February 15th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. So please make sure you contact the code inspector when you've had it cleaned up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine, that's fine. I, I have it labeled. All right, this is case 22-184, a Massey case on 2435 Academy Avenue. Right. Yes, 22-184. You ready? Go ahead. Okay. My name is Officer Scott, and I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This will be case DEL-22184, City of Deltona versus Karen Blackiki. Property address is 2435 Academy Avenue, parcel number is 8130321500. Zero. 
statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property's praises record. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special master clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. It was ruled on July 27, 2022, that the property owner was given seven days to remove the vehicles from the front yard or make a proper driveway extension. The owner did not come into compliance within those seven days and has been receiving a fine of $100 a day since August 4th, 2022. As of today, the property has accrued a total fine of $18,900 over 189 days. As of today, the property remains in violation with vehicles in the front yard. The city is requesting that the fine continue at $100 per day. Um, I'm question on this. Yes, um, is the is the vehicle in a driveway? He has a improper driveway extension as of right now. I see. It has to be attached to the existing driveway connected okay. to the apron. He's created a second. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. And so, and it was a hundred. It was a hundred dollars per day. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the date for compliance was seven he, days after. He was given seven days from July twenty seventh of twenty twenty two. All right. Um. All right, I find that respondent, oh, sorry. Uh, the notices um, were properly given in this case and the case file is admitted as exhibit A. I find that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the code inspector to verify compliance. Thank you. No, I have another one. <laughs> oh, what's that? I have another case. Oh, here. another one. Yeah. Okay. All right, so 22-185 Massey case on same property, 2435 Academy Avenue. Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Officer Scott. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as co-compliance officer. This will be Massey case DEL 22185, City of Deltona versus Karen Belecki. Okay. Kiki. The property address is 2435 Academy Avenue. Parcel ID number is 81303-215-0060. Statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraisers record. In addition, both notices were posted at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the, the special master clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day they were taken. It was ruled on June 22nd, 2022, that the property owner was given 45 days to obtain a permit for a driveway apron or a stop driving through the right of way. The owner did not come into compliance within those 45 days and have been receiving a fine of $100 a day since August 7th, 2022. The property has accrued a total fine of $18,600 over 186 days. As of today, the property remains in violation. The van driving through the right of way. Um, the city is requesting that the fine continue at $100 per day. So he never applied for that secondary apron. Is he permitted to get a secondary apron? He never even attempted to. There's nothing on record. Um, I'm just questioning whether he can actually get a permit for an I apron. I was told he had to apply for advance, which takes a while, but 
Nothing okay. has been done. So it's it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, I am going to, I find that the notices are properly given in this case and I'm admitting the case files in Exhibit A. I find resp that respondent in this case failed to correct the violation by the time specified in the special magistrate's prior order in this case and the fine will be imposed as set forth in that order and will continue to run until the property is brought into compliance and an affidavit of compliance has been filed by the code inspector. Respondent shall notify the co code inspector to verify compliance. All right, this is case 23-007, 2509 Tree Haven Drive. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This is in reference to case number DL23-007, City of Deltona versus Marshall Property Holding, LLC. Property address is 2509 Tree Haven Drive, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-040-150-190. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of International Property Maintenance Code Section 304.2 which states that all exterior surfaces, including but not limited to doors, door and window frames, cornices, porches, trim, balconies, decks, and fences shall be kept in good sounding working condition and maintained in good repair. Uh, exterior wood surfaces other than decay resistant woods shall be protected from elements and decay by painting and other protective covering or treatment. Corrective action is to repair or replace damaged exterior surfaces. Statutory requirements for this notification of the hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at, at, and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This is a proactive case. Um, this case in particular is referenced the ex exterior walls at this location. Um, this case was opened July 2022. I noticed the exterior walls covered in mold and mildew. And in addition to the front and rear window and soffits boarded. This property is vacant. According to the neighbors, the owner is deceased. And I spoke to Mr. Pagan with the son of the property owner and he stated the property is getting purchased to whom plan to make proper repairs. In November, I spoke to the representative from the management company and described the violations and corrective action. As of today, the violation um, remains. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $25 per day to be imposed until such time that property owner has notified the city. What was the amount? $25. $25? And this is property uh, there's a property management company that's working on the property? Yes. Okay. Um, and is it, I'm just checking, is it like pressure washing that needs to be done to, or is there, it looks like there's also areas that have been cut out of the side of the house. Is that? Um, I'm not sure if they've been cut out, but I know that it needs to be pa uh, painted, pressure washed painted. There's some um, windows that have a board on it the, by the front door. The, the um, part of the, I guess the soffit mm -hmm. has boards on it. That I'm not sure if that window is broken because there's a board on it. Um, the porch is in disrepair, but you can see all the mold and mildew just kind of growing. Right. There's pictures from today. Okay. And I'm sorry, you requested 30 days? Yes. 30 days. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I find that the notices were given properly in this case. I'm admitting the case file as Exhibit A. 
and um, I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on March 10th. Oops, sorry, I'm making sure I'm writing this down. Um, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day that the violation continues past the four stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. All right, this is 23-013, 810 Cortland Boulevard. My name is Taylor Sukup. I'm employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23-013, the city of Deltona versus Larry Lane GAEST. The property is 810 Cortland Boulevard, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The parcel ID number is 8130415700090. This is violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance, Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, Section 303.1, which states that the swimming pool shall be maintained and cleaned um, and in sanitary condition and in good repair. Uh, this corrective action for said violation is pool must be maintained and either drained of water or must be clinically treated to remove algae. Water should be clear and sanitized. The statutory requirements for the notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated proactively on August 23rd of 2022. While addressing other violations, I noticed that the property was vacant. I could also see a pool screen in the rear yard. I knocked on the door and there was no answer. I called for assistance so I can inspect the pool and ensure it's safe and sanitary. However, it was not. I posted notice of violation to the property on September 26th of 2022, then posted a notice of hearing on January 30th of 2023. The property owner's daughter, Cindy, has made contact. As of today, the property remains in violation. The city would like to request 45 days for the uh, property to come into compliance or a fine of $100 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay, and the do you have the pictures from today or I recently? Do. It's not in there. Did they not? Did they not get attached earlier? Oh, that that is okay. Yeah, that's one thirty. So that's today's photos. Oh, it's not. I. Okay. But it's one, okay, so one thirty. but the date that you gave for compliance was October 5th, mm -hmm. right? Mm hmm Okay. And have you, and were you there today? I was. And did it look the same as yeah, those exactly photos? Yeah, exactly the same. One thirty. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what is the reasoning for $100? Um, it's really just a safety issue, honestly, because um, a child or a dog could get back there. I know there's a safety fence up, but there's actually no actual fence from the property. So really anybody can come up from the road and get in there, animals or children, anything. So it's kind of a safety concern that I'm kind of encouraging them to get it done quicker. Okay. That's, um, did you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to find, okay, I, the notices were properly given in this case. I'm admitting the case file is Exhibit A. Um, and I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on, oh, can you give me 45 days? Forty-five days is March twenty-fifth. March. 
March 25th would be 45 25th. days from today. Okay, on March 25th. Um, and that respondent correct the violation before, oh sorry, before four o'clock p.m. on March 25th, 2023, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, uh, a fine in the amount of, I'm gonna do $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated stated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. Thank you. This is 23-021, 1629, Lindsay Terrace. Your Honor. Ms. Ike. Yes. For the record, the photos that were taken for today and uploaded, unfortunately, weren't formatted, so they're not gonna be able to be seen. For, for this case? For this case coming on. Okay. So, the do you have photos of the violation after the date of compliance for this case? The date that you, you requested compliance? Let's see. The compliance date. Uh, I've been back there probably let me see the compliance. Compliance date was September 21st, so there should be some pictures at least taken on the day of posting. 21st. You've had the compliance date as September 21st, 2022. Yes. Do you have any photos after that? Right. Yes, uh, looks like. Yeah. Okay. All right, proceed. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This case will be number DEL 23021. The city of Deltona versus Kellner, Charlene and Estate. The property address is 1629 Lindsay Terrace, Deltona, Florida 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-072-080-0. This is a violation of the City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-5, which adopting the latest in addition of the International Property Maintenance Code Section 304.7, which states the roof and flashing shall be sound tight and not have defects that emit rain. Corrective action for said violation is to repair or replace the fascia boards, gutters, or drainage. Statutory requirements for notification for the hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case originated from a citizen complaint on this property on 5-2 of 2022. The initial concern was for the lot maintenance in a vehicle. Upon arrival to the subject property, I, I noticed the fascia boards on the roof line of the home. I left a courtesy notice on 5-9-2022 for notification to the homeowner. On 6-12 of 2022, I made an attempt to contact the homeowner at the property. No one, no answer at the door or no one appeared to be at home. A notice of violation was posted on 9 12 22 on the home. No contact from the homeowner's evident over the last few months. Another attempt to reach out to the homeowner was done on 10 31 2022 with a visit to the property. A business card was left to call the officer. Notice of hearing was then posted on 1 25 2023. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day to be imposed upon such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Did 
did, did you have more? Or you no, that's, that's it. That's okay, that's it. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right, so I see in the pictures, um, is the roof kind of the, the roof buckling is or? The roof looks, I can't, can't com really comment on the roof, not, uh, there probably is some, but it's mostly the, the probably rotting of the rain coming off the roof and, and rotting the boards through from left side of the house to the, through the front and again alongside the right side of the house. Right. Uh, all the pictures do expose some kind of rotting. Okay. And wood. were you at the property today? Yes. Did it look the same as in this photo yes. from one, sorry, was this one from 125? Yes, there's, yeah. uh, again, I've, I've again, made numerous attempts to try to make contact. That, Appears that if there is someone there, they're not uh, making any reference to coming, okay. coming to notice who, who they are. And what were you recommending for the time for compliance and fine? Uh, 30 days and $50 per day. <clears throat> okay. Um, and I find that the uh, notices were properly given in this case, and I'm admitting the case files exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on March 10th, which is 30 days. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. All right, next is 23-024, uh, 2801 Fern Lane. My name is Todd Mead. I am employed by the city of Deltona as a code compliance officer. This will be case number DEL 23024, the city of Deltona versus Lamco Asset Company 1 LLC. The property address is 2801 Fern Lane, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The parcel ID number is 813-074-530-010. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3. Adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1, .1, which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical, gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the insulation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Corrective action for this violation is to get a permit for the fence that was erected. The application must be submitted to the city of Deltona. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. Contact office with the permit number when obtained. Statutory requirements for notification for this hearing have been met by the notice of hearing and notice of code violation sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's record. In addition, the note, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to the hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. On July 13, 2022, I observed a new fence panels placed on the back and side yard of the subject property. I reviewed the city record for any permit issued for the fence. No application or issued permit had been recorded. I left a courtesy door hanger notice to the homeowner to comply. This, to this home was tenant occupied at the time the case was open, and notice of violation was letter was sent out on 11-2-2022 to the owner of record. The certified mailing receipt was returned to the city on 11-14-2022. 
there has been no contact from the homeowner by person, email, or phone during this case. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $75 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. All right, my only question on this one is, is 30 days sufficient? Because I assume they're gonna have to have a survey and for the fence. If they have a survey, 30 days is more efficient because they can get it the same day. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I will go ahead and find that the um, notices were properly given in this case. The case file is admitted, admitted as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m on March 10th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of $75 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. Respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. All right, 23-029-2089 East Gloria Drive. My name is Kristen Coulter. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DEL 23-029, the City of Deltona versus SRAM PAC IA LLC. The property address is 2089 East Gloria Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32725. The parcel ID number is 813-004-280120. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 18-3, adopting the latest edition of the Florida Building Code, Section 105.1 which states that any owner, authorized agent who intends to construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, demolish, or change the occupancy of a building or structure, or to erect, install, enlarge, alter, repair, remove, convert, or replace any electrical gas, mechanical, or plumbing system, the installation of which is regulated by this code, or to cause any such work to be done, shall first make an application to the building official and obtain the required permit. Correction for corrective action for said violation is to obtain a permit for the fence. Applications must be con, must be submitted to the city of Deltona. The structure must meet all requirements of city ordinance and be approved on final inspection. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing have been met by. The notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed on the day they were taken. This case was initiated based on a complaint about a fence installed without a permit. On August 17, 2022, a door hanger was left. On August 30th, a notice of violation was posted on the property and mailed via certified mail. On December 20th and December 27th, contact was made with two different members from the property management company. They were informed of the violation and the corrective action. The notice of hearing was posted on January 30th, 2023. No further contact has been made. No fence permit has been applied for and the property is still in violation. The city would like to request 30 days for the property to come into compliance or a fine of $50 per day be imposed until such a time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Um, my only question is, I think I just ordered 75 for failure for the same thing, failure to obtain a permit. Um, so is there a reason that you're asking for 50? Um, just, the, no, there's no particular reason for that actually. Okay, all right. Um, Well, since that's what you're asking for, um, the I find that the affidavits were, um, I'm sorry, the uh, notices were properly given in this case. The case files admitted as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before four o'clock p.m. on uh, March 10th, 2023. In the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $50 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. 
the respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you. Uh, 23-038-2190 Howland Boulevard. My name is Marion Laracy. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Officer. This will be case number DL23-038, City of Deltona versus McDonald's Corporation. This property address is 2190 Howland Boulevard. Parcel 8D number is 811-401-000040. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Chapter 22, Section 22-4 which states no person shall engage in, manage, transact, transact, or carry on any business, occupation, or profession within the city for which there is a local business tax required by this article or any other provision of this code unless such person shall first procure a local business receipt to conduct the same from the city. It shall be no defense of non-payment of any local business tax required by this article that the licensee did not receive any bill or notice that the same was due from the city. Corrective action is to obtain a business tax license slash receipt or cease all business operations. Statutory requirements um, for this notification have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraiser's records. In addition, both notices were posted at the, on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayals of what I observed the day or they were taken. Uh, this case is a reactive case that was provided to me by the City of Deltona Business Office. The business tax receipt has not been obtained regarding both the restaurant, cafe, dining room and the drive-in takeout window. Um, it, the, uh, the exhibits of the uh, last two pages of the exhibits reflect the BTR expiration date of 9-30-2021. As per our business office, multiple attempts have been made to collect the yearly fees. Um, both BTRs have been invalid since the 9-30, um, 2021 date, which exceeds the 150 days. I request a minimum of 30 days for the property to come into compliance with the understanding that the fire inspector and building department would need to sign off on the order for the BTR to be issued. Um, this could extend the time or one-time fine of $250 for both inactive BTRs. Um, as of today, um, I received an email, actually as of yesterday, received an email from our business office that they, McDonald's has completed the application and have paid the invoices. Um, and the application was sent to the building and the fire to finish the inspections. And once they sign the application, um, the business office can print the tax, the tax certificate and they will be back into active status. But as of this time, um, the business tax receipt is not valid. Right, and it expired, the last one expired on 9-30-2021. Correct. So we're well over 150 days. Yes. All right, I'm going to, um, find that the notices were properly given in this case and the case files admitted as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that a $250 fine shall be imposed. This is 23-063-1470, Helena Court. Ma'am, just for the record, for clarification, that last order on that last case, is that $250 for both BTRs or is that $250 for each BTR? Um, it was brought as one violation. Understood, thank you. So I, I did one $250 fine. <laughs>
My name is Marion Lerisi. I'm employed by the City of Deltona as Code Compliance Officer. This case is in reference to DL23-063, City of Deltona versus uh, Maleska Frank. The property address is 1470 Helen Court, Deltona. Parcel ID is 813-072-230-010. This is a violation of City of Deltona Ordinance Section 38-114 which states that furniture outside must be designed to be placed outdoors or, or stored inside a covered structure. In addition, storage of materials relating to residential use, children's toys, play toys, firewood, brush, logs, or any other material tended to be used in fireplaces or other permitted burning facilities shall be permitted only in the rear yard to the rear wall of the home. Corrective action is to uh, properly store or remove from, from the property. Statutory requirements for this um, hearing have been met. Notice of hearing and notice of code violation were sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with property appraisers. In addition, both notices were posted on the property in at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All the evidence in this case, including photographs, have been marked as exhibits and submitted to the special magistrate clerk. I certify any and all photographs to be true and accurate portrayal of what I observed the day they were taken. This was a proactive case that began August of 2022 when I noticed multiple items stored in the carport, I met with the property owner, Mr. Maleska, and discussed with him the violation and corrective action of storing items in the enclosed structure or disposed of, of the property. Um, we've met several times in the duration. Um, each time he has shown improvement on cleaning up the carport. Uh, the carport does not constitute as covered or enclosed structure in which I um, did um, it, uh, uh, give that information to the property owner. The resident is continuing to work on it. Um, I was out there today. The violation does remain. He has made some significant change, but as you can see, he's still in violation. I um, met with him today, um, and uh, we, he was okay with doing a 30-day time frame or a $25-day um, fee imposed until the property owner has notified the city of compliance. Okay. Um, I find that the notices were properly given in this case and the case file is admitted as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on March 10th, 2023. Uh, in the event respondent does not comply by the state, a fine in the amount of $25 per day will be imposed for each day. The violation continues past the aforestated stated date. Respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Three dash one zero three nine twenty three Adler Drive. My name is Danny Ron. I am employed by the City of Deltona as a Code Compliance Supervisor. This will be case number DEL 23-103, the City of Deltona versus Brian J. Gowlett. The property address is 923 Adler Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32738. The parcel ID number is 8130-1713-0020. This is a violation of City of Deltona Code Ordinance Section 18-5, adopting the latest edition of the International Property Maintenance Code Section 303.1, which states that swimming pools shall be maintained in a clean and sanitary conditions and in good repair. Direct, uh, corrective action for said violation is to, must be maintained and kept drained of water, or must be chemically treated to remove the algae. Water should be clear, water, water should be clear and sanitized. The statutory requirements for notification of this hearing has been met by notice of hearing and those code violation was sent certified mail to the property owner at the address listed with the property appraisal record. In addition, both notices were posted on the property and at City Hall at least 10 days prior to this hearing. All of the evidence in this case, including the photographs, 
has been marked as exhibit, exhibits and submitted to the special, uh, special master clerk. I sort of had annual photographs to be true and echo actual portrayal of what I observed in the day they were taken. Uh, Ma'am, this, uh, there was an officer no longer working for the city uh, presented this case back in August 24, 2022 to the special magistrate at that time. Um, they did find the property in non-compliance and they were given 60 days to come into compliance. However, since that time, there is a new owner, so we're restarting and I'm starting fresh. Um, and that, that exchange happened sometime in October 2022. Um, the case was started, but originally the violation started back on April 13, 2022. A notice violation was posted at that time. We were dealing with the previous owner and the current owner from the very beginning back in April. As of today though, the, the violation has not been corrected. Uh, the city would like to request 14 days for the property to come to compliance or a fine of $100 per day to be imposed until such time that the property owner has notified the city of compliance. It is for the green pool. And the, you have the date of compliance, you, you requested compliance is January 28th? That is correct. And is there a photo after that? Today's photo? Yeah, yes. That's today's photo, ma'am. This one is? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, it's definitely still green. Um, I am going to find that the um, notices were properly given in this case and admit the case file as Exhibit A. I find respondent in this case in violation of the city code as charged and that respondent correct the violation before 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, February 22nd. That's 14 days. Um, in the event the respondent does not comply by this date, a fine in the amount of $100 per day will be imposed for each day the violation continues past the aforestated date. The respondent is further ordered to contact the code inspector to verify compliance with this order. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. I think that's it. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll go ahead and adjourn.